All right, I do believe we might be live. What's happening, everyone? If you can just let me know if you can hear my voice and if you can hear the audio, okay. Or whether I need to reset the audio interface. Can you hear my voice coming through this morning? How are we doing with the audio? Is everything sounding clean so far? I'm gonna turn this up just a little bit. If someone can let me know in the chat, if you can hear me, I'd really appreciate it. Hear you, all right. What we're gonna be doing today, it's gonna be a super casual stream today. If you're catching this on the replay, thanks for joining me. It's gonna be just another super casual Sunday live stream. We're gonna be making some music today on the Akai Force. We're gonna try to keep it simple and use just the force today. For those of you who were with me last week, no worries, I've got my head wrapped around the step sequencing now inside of the force. So the workflow today is gonna to be a little bit smoother, hopefully. Thanks for joining me. What's happening, Mark? What's happening? Sky Tortoise Ferryman, thanks for joining me. Tony, hey Grant, how you doing today? All right, this is a, uh, sort of a dub techno groove that I wrote, I don't know, a couple of years ago inside of the force. What we're gonna do today to get started is just load up a few of my past projects inside of the force and check out a few of these grooves that I've written previously. I really like the way this one sounds. Hey, what's happening, Ned? All right. All right, let's go ahead and switch over to the overhead camera today and go into the menu of the force and load up some of these past projects. Like here's one from uh, February of 2019. Let's take a listen to what this little hip hop groove that I put together sounds like. Try to check the level that I'm sending out to you guys. simple but hard-hitting hip-hop groove. I like this one. Mm. Cool. Let's see what else is in here. Load up some of these other projects from back in the day. Let's see here. Here's a sort of a one that I've labeled future garage genre. Let's turn the volume down a little bit on this one and take a listen to what this sounds like. Oh yeah, I remember this one, this one's cool. Right on, let's take a listen to this. What's happening, Jamie? Thanks for tuning in. back into the menu and see what else is just sitting here. Here's a house thing. Actually, I think this is one that I wrote just the other night. Let's take a look here. Yeah, this is one that I just put together the other night using uh, some of their inbuilt um, drum sounds. I'm not super happy with the way the drums came out in this groove. Let's take a listen here. Yeah, maybe mute that lead to start with. Just sort of kind of a house groove here. What's happening, Fade Man? And then I've got a little lead synth. I'm not sure that I'm real happy with these drums though. This is just one of their inbuilt drum kits that I was messing around with. I'm trying to get a little bit more familiar with using the step sequencer inside of the force. Hey, I appreciate that, Jamie. Right on. Cool deal. Let's see what else is in this uh, 
box ready to go here. Maybe we can take a listen to his sort of a, a jungle attempt that I started messing with uh, quite some time ago. This one is, again, from 2019. Just unfinished projects that we're checking out this morning, having a little bit of fun getting started. Volume up on this one. Oh, yeah. It's got a really groovy beat. Hey, what's happening, Samuel? Thanks for tuning in. Ooh, come on, yeah. I really like the way the dub chords kind of float over this. For those of you who have been following my channel, you know that I really love the dub sort of dub chords floating over this aggressive beat is totally my vibe. In fact, this one maybe needs to get touched up and finished up, rather. Hey, what's happening, Joe? Thanks for tuning in. Oh yeah, I dig on this. All right, let's see what else is in here. We got something labeled More Chill. All right. I believe this is one that I was working on maybe just the other day or last night even. Turn the volume down and see what we've got here. Oh yeah, it's definitely more chill, all right. All right. Let's go. Yeah, super chill vibe I was messing about with here. Just sort of getting more familiar with the step sequencing, I think, is what created uh, this groove here. Not much here, just a couple of tracks, but mixed and produced really well. All right, we're gonna go to the browser, Let's see if there's anything else here. There's like a quasi MIDI dub thing that I made uh, quite some time ago. This was probably made uh, by just sampling little bits of uh, the quasi MIDI gear that I've got in the room. Oh, looks like there's quite a bit of patterns to this one. Let's take a listen to what this sounds like. Yes, I absolutely think that, Mark. We just need to wait a little bit for the next update, I think. I mean, that's just a guess, but I'm assuming, you know, that those things are going to be coming to the force as well. Not sure where to set the volume until we hear that kick drum come in. Here we go. Yeah, this one's got kind of a kind of a vibe with the sounds. Definitely quasi MIDI gear on this one. Hey, Martin, thanks for tuning in. Not a lot of variation in this one. A little bit of a break here. Sometimes it's fun to just, you know, load up some of these older projects that you haven't finished and try to, re you know, re-familiarize yourself with stuff you've created in the past. Kind of into a neat little section here. I might have ended up doing something with this along the way, Tony, somewhere. Kind of sounds a little familiar to me, too. And I can't tell if it's because I wrote it or if it's because like I ended up turning it into a finished track or maybe a live jam. I'm not really sure. But I dig the way this one sounds. Let's see if there's anything else that we want to check out before we get started today. Hmm. Ooh, what does that sound like? Or maybe, actually, yeah, let's check out this Sunday morning dub. Let's check that out. I think I remember what this is, and it's actually kind of not dubby, if I'm not mistaken. Let's check it out. 
Well, it's kind of a neat little groove, right on. Mm-hmm. Maybe there's a lead sound we can bring in as well. I like the way this sounds. I'm not sure why I didn't finish this one. It sounds really nice. It's mixed well. Got a cool lead. Yeah, I like the way this one sounds. Right on. All right. What let's do is let's go ahead and start a brand new project today. Let's maybe start by loading up some of the inbuilt drum kits to the Akai Force and see if anything sort of, you know, gels or not gels rather, but like um, catches my interest, I guess would be the better way to say that and see if we can get inspired to actually start making something from scratch today. Let's go, let's see here. We're gonna go new project and I don't need to save anything. Let's see here. Can you guys hear my voice okay? Is my voice loud enough? Do, do I need to come up uh, in volume or the, uh, against the music or anything? We can sort of balance that as the stream um, you know, continues here. Let's go ahead and start by deleting these first two tracks that the project uh, loads up by default when you start a new project. And let's go ahead and load a brand new uh, drum bank at this time. And then maybe, yeah, maybe we'll go into like um, the kits that come uh, with the force. Um, and then we'll maybe just scroll through a bunch of these and see if anything is sounding, I don't know, like something I want to work with today. Let's skip past some. Um, these base house, Fresh. check out some of these deep house kits. Fresh. These are just kits that uh, come with the Akai Force. Uh, and they're like 16 sounds. You know, you get some drums and you get some, you know, like one shots and whatnot to work with. Sometimes these can be an interesting way to get going. The thing about these is I'm not trying to be like a snarky or anything as we get started, but the quality of some of these sounds that you know come in these kits they're not all 100% like up to my you know standard of sounds i don't want to sound you know rude or you know jerky when i say that um but like some of these are a little bit underproduced maybe or overproduced or like lacking any EQ and stuff like that so we're going to just scroll through these casually some nice chords in that one but often I find, like, on this one especially, like, a lot of these have, like, this, when you really start, fo I'm going to load this, actually. Uh, a lot of these, like, when you really start focusing on the actual sounds themselves, they're not necessarily, um, how do I say this, like, the best uh, sounds in the world, per se. Um, it's a little bit of a click at the end of that kick drum, per, for, for example. It's not bad though. Bass. It's a little large that kick drum though for you know to be used in deep house. It's more of like a techno kick drum to my ear. We're gonna keep um we're gonna keep scrolling through kits, I think, before we just start moving ahead with that one. Ooh, very distorted on that one. Kind of like some of the sounds in that one. Let's load that up and like re, uh, you know, take a closer look at these or listen to rather these sounds. Again, I mean, they're labeling this deep house, but that's like the biggest kick in the history of ever, right? I mean, that is unfortunately not even close. Hmm, but I really like the sound of these chords up at the top, though. Let's keep scrolling.
scrolling. Turn it down as we scroll. Some of these kids are very, very loud. Wow. So far, what I'm uh, most vibing was that Sub-Zero kit. I just want to remember that. If we want to go back to it, that Sub-Zero kit had those nice chords that I was digging. And now we're into the drum and bass section. Yeah, okay, cool then. Let's go back to... Um, Sub-Zero. Okay, yeah, let's just start off with this Sub-Zero kit, because I really like uh, the chords that we're hearing at the top, and I think this will be a, a neat little example as well, because I'm not necessarily looking to, you know, to, to load these kits up and then, you know, use every sound in the kit, per se, just to get us started with a little bit of inspiration. Let's go ahead and take a look at our uh, beats per minute today. We're at 125 and um, I want to maybe start us off at 130 beats per minute today, a little tiny bit faster. And what let's do is go ahead and create a clip here to start us off. And um, let's make this a two-bar clip to start us off with. And let's see here. Cool. Um, if I just press, uh, let's see, if we just launch this and... All right, we can see the whole clip here. Cool deal. All right, and what I want to do is I want to turn the metronome on. Yeah. Just trying to figure out what I want to do exactly with these stabs uh, here, these one shots to get us a little bit of a groove created. I think we'll just do something really simple to get us started with these chords. I'm going to make sure, uh, let's see here, that we're record arm is on. Or did I lose the metronome there? There we go. Wrong one. Try that again. Yeah, what I want to do... Is, let's see here. I want to go ahead and erase that one at the bottom. And I want to go ahead and make this clip uh, twice as long to begin with. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to hold shift and we're going to hit double. We're gonna, that's going to uh, double the length of this clip to a four bar clip. Uh, one, two, three, and two. Yeah, cool. Dun, dun, dun. Now I've got a little bit of a turnaround there at the end of the four bars. We can go out of record mode there. Oh, I see I have the metronome on. It's not to do with recording. All right. What I want to do is I think I want to go ahead and edit the volume on the one of these stabs here. And maybe also right off the jump, what we could do would be to create a little bit of stereo uh, separation in our track by, you know, panning one of these uh, sounds, maybe like just very gently five to the left and the other one maybe very gently uh, five to the right, just so that they're a little bit off from the dead uh, center point where we're going to be uh, having the kick drum and some other sounds. Hey, what's happening, Omri? Thanks for tuning in. All right. All right, got kind of a neat sound started here already. What I think we're going to do is go ahead and, whoa, there's an air maximizer on this. I don't want that there, so we're going to go ahead and remove that. We're actually going to replace that um, with a parametric EQ. So I'm going to go down here and choose air, parametric EQ. Then we're going to load that effect up, and I'm going to put uh, a little bit of a high pass uh, to cut off any of the frequencies beneath like 100 hertz here, just to get a little bit more room in the mix for, you know, whatever kick drum we want to bring in in a moment. And yeah, all right. What let's do, let's see, is let's go ahead and get um, a kick drum started in this. And what we'll do to make that happen, turn the volume down just a tiny little bit here, is I'm going to see if I can find out what key we're actually writing in. 
And let's see here. What I've got, if I can turn this camera a little bit and show you guys at home there. I'm using, um, there we go, I'm using uh, some visualizers here inside of Ableton Live. This is the FabFilter Pro Q3. This is the Isotope Tonal Balance Control. And down at the bottom right, we have the Mixed In Key um, plugin from, what is it, Captain Mix or from Captain Plugins. I, I can't remember the, the name all of a sudden. Anyhow, this is going to let us know what key we're working in, or at least it's going to attempt to. So I'll stop talking. It thinks that we're writing in the key of D major. So we're going to go ahead and work with that today. I often find that that plugin is ridiculously handy for you know saving some time when you want to find out, you know, what key some random samples are in that you maybe you've just, um, you know, loaded up. And before we go any further, let's go ahead and uh, get a save on this today because I'm a chronic oversaver, and I encourage you all to be chronic oversavers as well. You never know. Even something like a little power fluctuation that you weren't expected, you know, can trip the power on your unit. And if you haven't saved in a couple of hours, there's going to be some swearing in that room if you get what I'm saying. So I definitely encourage you to all be chronic oversavers. We're going to go ahead and put this on the hard drive that I've got uh, uh, installed here. I've got a folder called Sessions, and let's just call this uh, YouTube um, thing, I don't know, 0998 or something, right? Cool. Just a name so that I can save the project, and that if anything goes wrong, we've got kind of a place to go back to. Let me get a sip of coffee. Okay, now we're writing apparently in the key of D major today. I normally write in the key of F minor. That's my preferred key to write in for those of you who have been watching my channel for any amount of time. So this is going to be an interesting and fun challenge today. D major. The very first thing that I want to do is I want to get a kick drum into this project, but I want to get a kick drum, if possible, that's already tuned to the root note of D. D so that it's going to really gel with what we've got here. Now, I don't know how they have their, you know, drum sounds, you know, their samples inside of this box labeled. I don't think they're labeled by root note and stuff like that. So we're going to go into one of my sample packs, uh, which has kick drums that are labeled by the root note. And we'll see if we can find a kick drum that's in the root note, you know, tuned to the root note of D. That sort of sounds good and sort of gives us a vibe to start working with today. I'm going to go ahead and just play what we've got here and we're going to go actually I'll wait one second to get that going we're going to go um, back into the menu uh, the matrix rather and we're going to load a drum uh, machine onto track number two uh, let's see here I'd like um, the drum machine to be on the left today so we're just going to do a copy and a paste here and then a delete, and now our chords are on track uh, two, and we've left uh, you know, the first track where we can put our drums. Let's just verify that. Yeah, good deal. Okay, so I'm gonna start a clip here. We can open that up by clicking clip, and let's see, I believe it's an eight bar clip to begin with. I don't want that to begin with. Let's just start with a really simple two bar loop to work with. And I'm gonna play our groove now, and we'll start scrolling for that kick drum sample. So I'm gonna go load. Uh, let's see here, I wanna be on note, and I wanna be on the second, um, I'm sorry, the first track, right? Yeah, which is our uh, empty drum track here. And I'm going to go ahead and, let's see here, places, internal, Dean's hard drive. Cool. Electronic sounds. All right. I've got a sample pack. Turn the volume down a little bit here so I'm not yelling over the chords so much. I've got a sample pack called Reflective, which has quite a few one-shot samples in it. And one of the things that this sample pack features is my personal stash of kick drums. So if we go into that folder, we then see a whole bunch of folders and every uh, possible root note, you know, A, A sharp, B, C, C sharp, all of the root notes here uh, have folders. And in these folders are kick drums that are tuned to that root note. So here I've got three different kick drums for us to see if maybe one of these will, you know, suit our project. Let's take a listen to these. Let's So the first one is pretty bombastic. That second one I think might be the one. 
because that third one is pretty bombastic as well. So I'm going to go ahead and just load that second kick drum. It's already tuned to the root note of C. I like the way it sounds. It's kind of like a deep house, kind of like dub techno kick. You guys know that's sort of my vibe. So let's go ahead and go in here and get these launched at the same time, get the clips working together at the same time, I mean. And now that we're, you know, selected that uh, drum track, I can just go into the step sequencer and we can go ahead and put in some kick drums at this time. All right. I'm going to go to the mixer here. Now, because we're starting from scratch today, there's going to be quite a bit of, you know, volume adjusting and tweaking as we start, um, you know, adding more sounds. In a moment, what we're going to do is we're going to add um, a maximizer on the master bus channel, and I'll remix these levels uh, according to that for us to get going. All right. Let me go ahead and save at this time. It's a save project. Now we just got that uh, ready to go and save in case anything were to go wrong, you know. All right, I'm turning the volume down just a little bit. I think what I want to do is I want to put um, a little bit. Uh, yeah, I did that. Okay, good deal. I think what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and put an EQ on this kick drum. And in a moment, I'm going to go ahead and listen to this on my monitor speakers and try to make sure that everything uh, frequency wise is where I expect it to be. Last week, like for instance, the kick drum that I chose uh, on the headphones was a little bit, uh, maybe not the best kick drum in the world, for example. And when I heard that stream back on the monitors, I was like, oh man, I wish I had, you know, maybe adjusted the foundation before we had moved forward. So we're gonna do that in a minute also. Like I'll check it out, uh, how this sounds on my monitors and we'll do a little adjusting um, as well. Um, for those of you who don't know, I like to really mix and produce as I as I go. Sometimes that means it takes a little bit longer for my sessions to kind of get started. I don't want to just jump in and just start, you know, putting in a bunch of notes and sounds as fast as I can and then go through and try to, like, fix those and polish those later. But I sort of do that as I'm working, and that's just sort of the way that I work. It's not, like, the best way to work or the way you should work. Work. It's just the way that I work. So we're going to be working, you know, sort of slowly as we get going and really trying to build a solid foundation for which to add other elements onto today. So speaking of foundation, we've got a nice kick and some chords. Let's get a uh, like a hi-hat happening here so we can get some sort of a backbeat groove happening right off the jump. Let me change the camera here. And I'm going to go in and add another drum machine. I'm also going to start uh, labeling things so that things don't get confusing. We're going to double click on this first track and we're going to label this kick. And then, cool, we're going to go into this second track and we're going to label this, uh, actually let's call this main chords because we may add some more chords later and let's call this one um, we're going to add some top elements now top elements to me are like you know uh, hi-hats shakers clap ride anything that's not a kick drum so that we keep the kick drum on its own individual channel I'm going to just call this tops one for now in case I want to add some more tops later I'm also going to save the project and check in with the chat real fast can the force quantize into a key everything on the outputs even the drums. Um, well, the drums are just audio samples, so it can't, um, by default, like um, analyze my samples and then auto-tune those, for example. It doesn't do that. Um, but it does let us, you know, select a key for all of the melodic information uh, to adhere to today. And we're going to be using that feature, in fact, uh, to set this to the key of D major in just a moment. Um, but yeah, it's not going to auto-tune your drums for you. That you'll need to do either, you know, with... There's lots of ways to, to you know, to specifically um, tune the drums. There's not a lot of great um, visualizers in the Akai um, for visualizing our frequency. And that's kind of why um, I take an output from my mixer and route that into Ableton so that I can get a little bit more, um, you know, visual uh, on what I'm creating. Um, 
right, we're going to try to add a hi-hat here. And what let's do is, right, we're going to go ahead and go note. And let's add the hi-hat on this pad here. I'm just going to play the groove and see if we can find, like, a hi-hat uh, from, you know, uh, let's, let's go back to that reflective sample pack that we got the kick from. All right, let's go load. And then we're just going to go up. Um, electronic sounds, and then we were in the reflective pack. Let's go drums, and here I've got a folder of hat sounds. Ooh, that's it. Okay, fantastic. There's a hi hat we can work with. So I'm going to go ahead and go here, and we're going to put a clip in. I'm going to go uh, clip, and we're going to make this a two bar clip. And then we're just going to go into the step sequencer mode. I just want to have the pad uh, selected that I want to step sequence. Whoops. What am I doing wrong? There we go. Just needed to get that clip playing in time with the other two clips. And now what we've got is just a really basic, you know, hi-hat sound. We can go to the mixer and I can put a parametric EQ on that hi-hat go into the second page and remove some of the low frequency content on that hi-hat as well and we can bring it down in the mix also fantastic what we've got now is we've got three uh, sounds you know with these chords this kick and this hi-hat we've got a little bit of you know content that we can start balancing um, some frequencies and whatnot with so what I want to do is I want to go ahead and add the Maximizer onto the master bus at this time and what this is going to do it is going to most importantly act as a limiter on our master bus keeping the volume from going over the zero decibel that's going to help protect our ears our headphones and our speakers it's also going to help just glue these sounds together right from the beginning. Like I said, we're mixing and we are producing as the very first steps. I'm not just trying to load a whole bunch of sounds in and mash things together and then smooth it all together later. I'm trying to do all of those things as we go today. So let's add this maximizer on the master bus. What we're gonna do is we're in uh, the mixer, okay? We're gonna go ahead and scroll over to the second page, which is our uh, sends and returns, and also our master bus track, outputs one and two. So if I go to the effects on the um, master you know, output track, I wanna put uh, an EQ as the very first effect on that track, and I'm gonna open up that EQ. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use these controls on the second page on the right here to cut off any sub frequencies beneath about 30 uh, hertz. These are so low that like speakers can't reproduce them and our ears can't hear them and they just take up extra headroom in the mix. So by removing those, we can not, uh, not only get a, you know, a tighter and more focused and glued together mix, but we also get a little bit more headroom as well because some of the frequencies that don't need to be here that speakers can't reproduce and your ears can't hear are taken out of the mix. Um, cool, we're going to leave it like that. This is uh, the high, high, the tops track. I'm going to bring this down just a tiny little bit as well. Uh, let's see here. And what I want to do, right, I'm going to mixer. Yeah, okay, right, we're going to put the, uh, the uh, maximizer as the last thing on the uh, outputs one and two on the master outputs. Here it is, air maximizer. Now, if I bring this open, by default, their setting is like a negative. I just use their default setting, uh, and I print I put the threshold up to zero dB so that we're getting um, the least amount of of this effect that we possibly can. The more we bring the threshold down, the more of this effect we're adding to the mix. And we just want to add a very, you know, this is like our finishing tool. We don't want to use it to massively sculpt what we're doing, just to kind of evenly polish off the tops and keep things in line. Okay, we're going to set the ceiling here. So like how high does the volume go? We're going to put that all the way to 0.0. .0. So it'll go all the way up to zero, but it won't go over the zero decibel. We're going to leave this knee at set to hard, and that's how fast or slow the compressor uh, responds. 
we're going to go ahead and take this low frequency mono setting. And this is really, really, really key for using the force and getting um, your mixes to translate well to lots of different speaker systems. This is taking the low frequency content of the master bus. So every single thing in our track is running through this plugin. And it's taking the frequencies here and it's taking everything be beneath the frequency that I set, which I just set this to 120 hertz. It's taking all of the sonic content beneath that frequency and it's making it mono. So all of our bass and kick are now going to be right up the middle based on that here. This is the last thing in the chain. We're also going to take this release here and we're going to put this as close to 300 even as we can. I'm just going to leave that to 299 for now. I'm going to go ahead and play what we've got. Hopefully it won't be too loud. And we're going to start adjusting some levels at this time. Uh, actually, I need to go what back to the mixer and then volume here and then go back to the matrix and then get us going. Is that how this is? Yeah, all right. Okay, good deal. All right, so I can get a t start taking a look at these levels now. All right, what we're going to do is we're going to start by... Yeah, soloing this kick drum here and taking a look at where its level is. It's hitting at about negative 3.4 decibels. I'm going to try to get this to hit right about negative 3 decibels to start with. That's sort of where I, you know, get my kick level going when I'm starting. Let's mix this hat a little bit with it. It's sounding pretty good so far. pretty happy on the headphones with the way that these three tracks are mixed together. I'm going to go over here and we're going to, yeah, we've got the maximizer keeping us from going over the zero decibel here. And what I can do is if I want to squeeze this a little more, I can bring the threshold down and I can really get us, you know, squeezing, but I don't want that kind of a sound. In fact, we're already getting a little bit too much reaction on our master bus than I would like. So I'm going to go back to the volume of our tracks here. Whoops. And I'm going to bring all of these down. One, two, three. Three clicks each. Just to bring the overall volume down a tiny little bit. That's being pushed into our maximizer plugin. That's a little bit more what I'm looking for. Fantastic. Let me check the level I'm sending out to the mix. All right. Can you guys hear that okay? And can you hear my voice okay? Oh, uh, Henri says, I have a lot of cool toys and I know them inside and out. How do I do it? Well, the thing is, actually, is it's pretty simple. I don't really have like other hobbies aside from, you know, just keeping my wife happy. I spend as many hours of the day in this room as I can. Um... And yeah, I mean, as a sound designer, I just love to play with as many different tools as I can. I've been at this since like 1987, um, and I've, you know, been around the block a few times when it comes to gear. I've been completely uh, all, you know, hardware. I've been completely in the box with no hardware, and now I'm just sort of having fun with all of the different aspects of um of the producing that I can. What I want to do now is I want to just take a moment that I've got these three sounds started and I want to hear it on the monitor speakers so that I can get, um, just make sure that the foundation is where I want it to be so that we can keep building on this foundation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mute my mic for a moment and I'm just going to turn on my monitor speakers and go back and forth for maybe a couple minutes and just make sure that this is where I need it to be. All right.
Check. Okay. All right. I think we're doing pretty good. Um, all things said and done there. What I want to do is I want to do a tiny little bit of adjusting on these hi-hats still. This is going to be very subtle. Um, but this is what I meant about really building a solid foundation. You know, most people will be like, that sounds okay. Let's go. But, you know, I really like to get things exactly where I want them um, right as I'm beginning. What's happening, Opie? Um, okay. So we're going to... Um, we're going to... We're going to mute tracks one and two. Right, so I'm just hearing those hi-hats. I'm going to bring the volume down so they're not quite so loud for you guys. And we're going to go um, show you what I'm doing here on the force. Okay, I'm going to go to the, um, the parametric EQ on the force. And I'm going to need to stop talking. Maybe about 4.6. Okay. And I'm taking a visual look at what the hi-hats are doing here and where they're really, really prominent uh, frequency-wise. And I just want to sculpt these a tiny little bit and bring a tiny little bit of these sort of high-mid frequencies um, back on this just a little bit. I think that sounds better already. Just so that the hi-hats aren't screaming quite so bright. Hey, what's happening, Vortex? Hey, what's happening, Enzo? Enzo says, uh, is the Force going to get a new update now that the NPC lineup has received those? Yeah, I absolutely. I don't see any reason why not. Uh, I'm not actually like a beta tester. I, there's not enough hours in the day for me to like beta test uh, these you know, pieces of gear. Um, but I'm pretty confident that, you know, based on what I've, you know, heard, that we are going to be getting uh, those same features that just got put in the NPC live into the force. We just need to wait for the next update or whatever. They can only, I'm guessing, work on, you know, kind of one box at a time or something. All right, cool deal. I'm still going to bring, I think, um, that hi-hat down. Also, by EQing some of the frequencies away from this hi-hat, it's going to leave me some, um, some of the high frequencies for other sounds as well. But I like the way this is sounding. And what let's do here is let's, um, let's go ahead and uh, get our, um, our groove feeling like a four on the four, a four on the floor groove by um, putting like a turnaround kick drum uh, every four bars. Uh, let's see here if we can. Um, we're going to go with hold step sequencer. Okay, cool. And then, what is it? Only a two bar pattern still? Two. Yes, it is. Okay. So our kick drum is only a two bar pattern right now, but I've got that selected. So if I go shift and double, it doubles the length of that kick drum pattern to a four bar pattern. Now, if I go clip, we can actually see all four bars here. And what let's do is, um, just gonna record this in, I think. Here, uh, not here rather, but see how we have that little turnaround at the end now? I actually hit a one wrong note as well, so we're gonna get rid of that one. But now, when I sort of zoom in here at the end, we've got that bum bum bum. bum, bum, bum. Cool. And what I'd like to do is maybe make that um, not as loud is the thing. So, right, if I go to step sequence, when all the lights are on, my the lights on the force look a little bit dim in here. I have to have quite a bit of light for this live stream. Um, but what I want to do is I want to, yeah, Cool. I just want to make that turnaround kick a little bit lower in velocity. And we can even see on the screen now that it's, you know, representative of that as well. It's going to take one second and check in with the chat. Thanks for everybody's patience today. All right. Hey, what's happening, Jimbo? Thanks for tuning in. Cool deal. All right. Maybe what let's do is go ahead and save at this time. We've got a, quite a bit of uh, polish started here on this foundation. And then maybe what we could do is try to find some sort of a base part that we could go ahead and get some, you know, um, 
vibe happening with. Let's go ahead and uh, add another track at this time, and let's add a plugin. And if I go shift and clip, we can take a look at the plugin here. By default, it loads the hype plugin, and I think we'll probably uh, just go with that for now. Um, I want to remember, though, that we're writing in the key of D major today. So if I just go Shift and Note, or would I have to be back to the matrix for that or something? Shift and Note. Cool. I can uh, set that on the hype synth as well. So I can set the root note here to D. Uh, the scale is already major. I really like uh, the pentatonic scale. So we're going to set this to D pentatonic major. Looks like it's trying to, uh, you know, have our velocities uh, set to, uh, you know, either a percentage or like full velocity. This is going to be hopefully, uh, if we get lucky here, a bass sound. And I'd like that to just be played at full velocity, I think. So we'll leave that there for now. Um, let me go back to the mixer and by default turn this track down a little and by default also add a parametric EQ on this track right off the jump. I'm going to go into that EQ, go to the second page, and I'm just going to remove any possible sub frequencies on you know this track beneath about 30 hertz. This is you know just going to be as we're scrolling through sounds uh, that'll just kind of take some of those really really sub frequencies off of any bass uh, that we won't be able to actually hear and that speakers won't be actually able to reproduce. We can now uh, go into the presets uh, for the hype synth. Let's see here. We can maybe start with like a uh, bass warm uh, and just start maybe scrolling through some of these presets. Um, I'd like to maybe set these notes. Um, where is that at? Uh, start on fourth to start on the root note. So now I've got a D on the left, and then it's going to go up the scale to the next D, and then we go up to the next octave, up to the next octave. Okay, and let's see here. Now we can just sort of maybe play the groove and just scroll through some bass presets and see if anything sort of gels with what we're creating here or we're vibing it at all, you know? don't really have anything in mind as far as what we're going to create or what I'm trying to create. So I'm just seeing if anything sort of, you know, stands out or gels a little bit with what we've got here. I often find that just kind of scrolling through presets and seeing what inspires you is a good way to, you know, find sounds to work with. Oh man, they sure know how to speak to me. This one is called 90 Kick Bass Slap, as in like that 90s sound, and boy, does that work for me already. Not sure that's the sound we're gonna actually go with, but it might be nice enough of a sound for me to maybe write a bass line with, and then we could maybe scroll through some more sounds. Let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna create a new clip here, and if I press clip, uh, let's see here, what I want to do is I wanna make this maybe like a four bar bass line to begin with, and then maybe just play something in and see if we like that, and then maybe scroll through some other sounds. Let's see what we can do here. Trying to find out, you know, trying to feel it out because if I make the bass line very busy, that's not going to leave as, you know, much uh, frequency range left over for other content. But if I make it too slow and too boring, then it's not interesting and we don't bring the vibe. So really, I think the vibe is what's important here. I'm gonna go and just record something in. Whoops. Three, four, two, two, three, three and dun, dun, dun. 
Attempt on four. Maybe we'll get lucky. Alright, not the best baseline in the world, but definitely something we can maybe work with. Turn the metronome off. And if I go to the mixer now, we can bring the volume down on that bass. All right, let's see here. Now, if I go shift and clip, we can get back to the hype synth, and I can just scroll through some of the included bass presets here. This is just one category of bass. This is like their warm category of bass. That subby thump could maybe be turned into something nice. That's kind of got potential. Boy, somebody labeled this one really well. This is a warm house bass, and it sure sounds like that. We kind of like this one too. I think it has a little bit of delay on it. What if we... So I'm going to soften the, I'm going to go with this bass and try to sculpt it uh, into our mix a little here. I brought the attack up on it a little bit so that it's not quite as uh, heavy transient on the attack. And we leave the punch of the kick drum. Yeah, I like the way this is sounding. Let's go ahead and save at this time. So save project. Now what I want to get set up right away is some side chain compressing with the kick drum and the bass drum so that they're not um, you know, fighting each other for that range in the frequency spectrum. And how do we do that? Well, this is actually super easy. I'm going to actually label this plugin first. Uh, this is now our bass. All right, do it. Cool. And let's see here. I'm going to change that color as well. Cool deal. So we've got the bass, we've got a kick, we've got our chords, we've got our tops, and we've got the bass. Um, it's not super easy to move tracks around inside of the force. You have to actually copy and then paste stuff if you want to move stuff around. But I think we're going to go ahead and do that at this time to make the project a little bit more um, easy to look at. Currently, we have kick and then chords and then tops. You know, I'd like to get these tracks making a a little bit more sense in the order that they're in. So let's see here. If I, let's see if I can do this without messing anything up. Well, I just saved, so it's not, you know, that big of a worry if I do mess anything up. But uh, I want to keep the kick in the track one, but I want to move these chords over uh, to track five after the bass. Good deal. Now we can delete that track and we have kick tops, bass, and chords, and that makes a whole lot more sense visually. Our drums are grouped together, and then our melodics are sort of grouped together. Let's go ahead and save at this time. All right, now what I want to do is I want to tuck this bass back into the mix a little bit. So we're going to go ahead and bring uh, up the mixer. And on the mixer channel for this bass, I can go to the effects tab, and what I can do is maybe just put a, I want a filter, like a low pass filter on this bass to remove some of the, the high frequency content on this bass. We're going to go filter, low pass filter, just a super, super easy. I've actually put it on the chords instead, so let's delete that and make sure I put it on the right track this time, which is the bass that I want it to be on. Did sound good on the chords though. Um, let's go. We want filter, low pass filter on the bass. There we go. We want to just tuck that back and remove some of those high frequencies from our bass. All right. Yeah. All right, now what I want to do is to get that side chain pumping so that um, our kick drum and our bass don't have any sort of conflict with each other in that frequency spectrum. I'm going to go to the effects here for our kick drum, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the mother ducker trigger on the kick drum here. This is going to 
um, trigger our side chain so that um, anytime the kick drum hits, it's going to trigger uh, this uh, plug in here. And it's gonna, you know, let it know the um, the envelope shape of whatever we're sending in here, which in this case is the kick drum. So all we need to do now is we need to go on our bass track and we need to put, I think I did that backwards, but we'll figure it out. We need to put the mother ducker, not the input. Yeah, I did that wrong. So we're gonna delete this one here. And what I need is on the kick drum, I need the one that says mother ducker input, not mother ducker. Now we're sending the kick to the input of the mother ducker. And if I pull the mother ducker up on the bass track here, it's gonna allow me you know, to choose uh, which, if I wanna have like more instances, for example, of this plugin, you know, we could uh, you know, pick more than one of those to duck from. But we're just using the one, really simple today. And when I hit play, we automatically start to get that side chain effect happening. The duck starts doing his little dance, and we can see right here exactly how much we are attenuating the bass whenever the kick drum hits. And we sort of use our ears at this point to decide, you know, how much ducking is appropriate. A little less. The goal isn't necessarily to remove the bass line or to hide the bass line. The goal here is just so that the frequencies in that bass line don't conflict with our kick drum. So that when our kick drum hits, it punches through the entire mix always, very cleanly, like we're hearing now. All right. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, take a listen on my monitor speakers real fast. Now that I've added this bass sound, we'll sort of see how we're doing. Give me just one second, and thank you for your patience. of distortion on these chords that see this is not, again I'm not trying to be snarky or like you know claim any sort of like uh, you know egomaniacal 
nonsense here. But, you know, the only thing that we used uh, that wasn't like one of my samples or whatever, but was somebody else's sample, were these chords. And that's kind of what I'm having a little bit of difficulty getting where I want it. If I, w I want them to be a little bit louder and a little bit cleaner sounding, um, but I can't, you know, go back and adjust the individual source material. So now I'm just kind of, I'm not exactly 100% happy with the way the chords are sounding. And so I decide, you know, do I want to just go with that and move forward or do I want to, you know, either replace the chords or tweak with the chords a little more? You know, this is kind of that sort of decision time. I feel like, I feel like those chords need to be a little louder. Um, but it's a little bit, I feel like distorting is the thing. Well, does the bass line not vibe? Because the bass line is in D major. Hmm. Hmm. And the bass line is definitely in key with the kick drum. Maybe then, maybe, maybe an idea would be now that we've got a little bit of a bass, and drums groove, maybe we eliminate the use of samples entirely and maybe just try to find maybe like another preset in the hype synth to use for the chords. That might be a good option. I think what we'll do is um, and maybe give that a go. It's sort of like leave what we've got here going and add another plugin. Let's go ahead and add a clip for that as well and make this, uh, yeah, let's just leave it as an A bar clip for now. And if we go shift and clip, we can bring up the hype synth. And let's see here. Does it know that, um, that I want to be in the key of D major? Let's see, come on, shift and note. D, pentatonic major, good deal. All right, so let's see. If I bring up the clip here and we can see here, go presets and basically what we want is hmm, maybe like a pluck sound to create a chord from let's try pluck light and just see what happens here maybe need to bring this down in volume a little bit as we're scrolling Let's just mess around and scroll through some of these presets on the hype sense and see if anything, you know, gels out. Hey, what's happening, Audible Video? Thanks for tuning in. Ooh. This is kind of a light uh, and interesting sound based on the, the groove that's kind of been created already. Maybe we want to turn the arpeggio on and maybe create an arpeggio with this sound. Hmm, bring this down in the mix some more while we're trying this out. No, that's not really what I'm after. Alright, no worries, we'll turn the arpeggio off. Okay, maybe we'll just need to scroll through some more presets on this hype sense. I don't think it's the 
one though. find something that kind of speaks to me. This one isn't quite there. We're finding some neat sounds though. A little popcorn sound there. yet. Something that kind of I don't have um, necessarily muscle memory on how to play like chords, for example, on these pads. So I'm just trying to find that's just octaves. What I need is pads instead of plucks. So let's see about that here. Let's go to pad warm and see what happens. Uh, maybe this is where we need to be. Yeah. Yeah, I like this sound. All right, let me bring this up in the mixer a little bit and let's put something in here. Let's go back to the matrix, make sure that our clips are all running at the same time together. Two, two, three, four. Let's we'll start on the top. Yeah, I started at the top. Yeah, okay, cool. That's track five, right? Let me go record arm on this track and put something in. According to clip. And one, two, three, let's go. That first one is a little odd, something. Let's see if we can't figure out why. I see, because I put my first notes over there instead. That's odd. Let's grab those and go. Nudge. Oh boy. Come here, you guys. I don't know how to make this go faster is the thing. Uh, let's see. Uh, maybe if I highlight them and then select them, we can grab those. Come here, you guys. No? Okay, that's cool, too. Get those deleted. And I can go, what is it? Uh, shift and time correct? No? Let me highlight these first. And go shift and time correct. No? There we go. Yeah. All right, I just need to get those first ones in. 
Let's record your clip. Yeah, try again. Two, three, and... Yeah. All right, there we go. Now I've got the first ones in as well. If we go to the mixer, I can put an effect on that uh, new pad sound. And you guessed it, it's going to be the parametric EQ. And we are going to remove any low frequency content on this pad beneath about 100 kilohertz just to sort of not uh, let anything conflict with our bass line or um, you know kick drum let's go ahead and label this as well uh, this is a uh, pad one and let's go ahead and save at this time as well let me take a moment here and check in with the chat also thanks for your patience everyone i know we've been kind of a little bit uh you know back and forth on this one so far the kick is too loud all right we're going to take another listen to that i appreciate the uh, the tip audible video okay um what we're going to do i think is to go ahead and delete um the uh, the sound that has those the track rather that has these samples on it um that we started with uh, i'm not sure why i'm not hearing that right now yeah these ones here so we're going to go ahead and just get rid of these chords completely and consider that as a way um you know just to help us get started and inspired today to create these other elements we're going to go ahead and delete now we've got the kick the tops the bass and that new pad sound and i'm a lot more happy uh with the way that this is you know coming together i just need to hear this now uh on the actual monitor speakers so i can see about the level for that new sound and how we're sounding. Give me just one second. Because that new pad sound really needed to come up in the mix, I believe. How are we sounding now? Hey, what's happening? Flip mode. Sounds good, Dean. Thanks very much, Audible Video. Yeah, all right. I'm much happier with this foundation than I was a moment ago with those chord samples. Try to mute just this kick drum here for a second. Yeah, it's got a little bit of extra oomph that I want to try to get rid of and bring the volume down a little bit there for you guys. It's right about 1K. I think that's probably going to be better. Let's save at this time as well. All right. Just bringing a little 
little bit of low frequencies here off of our new pad sound. Very subtly. All right. I'm going to take a look at our master bus uh, maximizer plugin and see how we're doing here. We're doing pretty good. We're not. We're, getting, we're doing pretty good, and we're not getting a whole lot of squeezing and compression, which is what I'm after. I want this to be sort of a finalizer, not necessarily a massive uh, amount of sculpting, the sound of our mix. But I think we can squeeze it a tiny little bit more, and let's find out. Uh, whoops, right, to get it going again, I have to go back and get it here. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Tiny little bit more there, it starts to really glue us. All right. Let's keep it at 1.2. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. All right, and how are we doing with the volume of the stream now that I'm getting quite a bit louder? I like the cut of your jib, flip mode. Let's do it. All right. What let's do go back to uh, see our t uh, our tops here and um, let's go ahead and let's see what I want to do here I'm gonna go copy that whole row of clips um, by hitting uh, copy and launch and then just hitting the next launch down here um, that gets the whole row of clips uh, copied into another row that we can now uh, edit and so, if I want to add um, a clap sound, we can create one and load it on this pad here. What let's do is just go back uh, into my reflective sample pack that we pulled the kick drum and the hi-hat from, and let's pull a clap sound out of that as well to uh, load to this bank. I'm just going to play the groove while I'm searching for that sound so we can try to find a clap that, you know, actually gels with the musical content here. I'm going to hit load. And let's see, I've got a folder here of snares, claps, and rims. We're going to go into that. That one's pretty wide, number three. I think we're going to load number three here. Yeah, I'm going to go into the step sequencing mode now. little bit of editing on this uh, sound itself. This is one of the things that I, you know, mention a lot is that one of the things that I really love about the Akai Force and the MPC Live and, you know, these line of boxes is that they have all of the tools to do producing and mixing outside of a computer. So right off the jump, we're going to go ahead and put an effect on this sound here. You guessed it. It's going to be that parametric EQ again. And what we're going to do is we're going to use this to remove any possible low frequency content beneath about, oh, I don't know, 80 hertz. And that's going to just keep that, uh, you know, low frequency content of our mix super tight and glued together. All right. I also, I think, want to go ahead and set up some effects sins inside of the force at this time so we can put a little bit of like reverb and delay on this clap and also on our hi-hat sound. Let's go ahead and save before we go any further. And what let's do is go into our mixer and scroll over to the return section here. Um, if I go to the effects, uh, by default, we can see that they have a reverb and a delay on return one and two. Unfortunately, I'm going to go in here and I'm going to screw that up by just deleting them. Now, why am I doing that instead of just using what they've got here? The thing is, is I want to produce and I want to mix outside of the box, right? So I want to keep any low frequency content from going through the reverb and the delay. Like we don't want, uh, you know, uh, any low frequency content like building up in our mix, for example. So what I'm going to do is, you guessed it, we're going to be using that parametric EQ and that is going to be the first uh, thing in the chain of both the reverb and the delay send. <laughs> 
Now, why am I doing that? We're going to go into the second page here, and we're going to use this EQ to remove any content from about 600 hertz below from even entering our effects change. So no low frequency content is even going to get into these effects whatsoever. So we're not going to have any possibility of like, you know, mud building up in these low frequencies. I'm doing the same thing now to both of these and I'm removing all of the lows between, uh, you know, b beneath 600. I'm going to set the highs on these to 19 uh, as well. So we're not getting uh, just a blast of high frequency content either. And now we're going to create a delay on the first send. So let's see here. What I'd like to use for that is maybe a delay um, analog sync. Sure, why not? And then if we bring that up, um, this is a, let's see here, uh, quarter notes by default. Let's make it maybe quarter note dotted. Um, if we can, it's hard to see probably on the camera there. And uh, we'll just leave that. Uh, we'll adjust that as needed. And let's put a reverb now as the second um, effects send. Let's go, um, let's see here. Is this an air reverb? Maybe that'll work. And we can maybe check out some of their presets here. Um, basic large. Opera, I think maybe Opera was one that I was fond of. I can't really remember, um, but we can adjust that as needed as well. So let's go ahead and save at this time. Now that we've got those effects sends set up to where there's no, you know, low frequency content going through there. Now on the clap, if I want to uh, affect just this clap and start, you know, putting some of the sends on this clap, we can go edit and I can click on that, just that pad. We can go to the um, effects tab of this pad only, and here I could put, you know, more effects on the pad if I want. But over here on the right-hand side, we've got our send 1, send 2, send 3, and send 4. Now, we just set up the send 1 to be that delay, and we just set up our send 2 to be that reverb. Let's put some reverb on this clap by default. Let's send like a bunch of reverb and see how that sounds. We can really hear what that reverb is actually doing in the mix now. Let's go back to that reverb and adjust it. Maybe try a different preset. Yeah, let's just leave it on there, but let's send quite a bit uh, less reverb to this clap. Tame it quite a bit. adding a little bit there. Cool. And then let's do the same thing on send one. Let's crank this way up so we can really hear what that delay is doing to the sound. And we can adjust the delay if we need to. It's pretty much doing what I wanted to do, but we just want a really small amount of that. And maybe we don't want the tail to be quite as long as that. So if I go back to mixer and I go back to the, 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 the delay tail, I can turn that feedback down just a little bit. And let's go ahead and play the mix now. See if we go back to mixer, I have to get us back into the regular section to start us up. Yeah, cool. Let's go ahead and add a tiny, yeah, rock on. Um, let's do the same thing with the hi-hat. Remember I said we were gonna be, you know, mixing and stuff as we're going. Okay, let's go ahead and add that parametric EQ on this hi-hat sound. This is now again, I'm affecting just the pad here. So I could load up to four different individual effects on any single sample that we load onto a pad. Super outrageously useful and powerful, really powerful. All right, get a little bit of extra EQ on that hi-hat and let's send that tiniest little bit. Probably can't even hear that just the tiniest little bit to these effects to give it just a little bit of, you know, uh, of its own acoustic space that we're creating here. I think I want to bring the um, effects down on the claps. Maybe bring the delay up on the closed hi-hat to get, um, if we bring the delay up on the closed hi-hat, we might be able to get kind of like a uh, background layer of rhythm happening. Yeah, see how it's echoing out now? Let's see what that sounds like in the mix. 
Yeah, it's very, very subtle, and we're getting a tiny little bit of extra rhythm now from that delay. I'm gonna bring it down the tiniest little bit. And we're gonna save at this time. All right. I'm gonna check in with the chat real fast. So we're writing in the key of D major. Can you guys hear my voice now that we've got the music super, you know, loud? And am I sending out a hot enough level? Just let me know if we start distorting. All right, this has kind of got a happy little vibe to it. I think it's uh, with a happy vibe like this. I think maybe we want to add like a, now might be the time for that plucked lead. Kind of uh, you know something over the top of this might be um, interesting. Trying to blend it uh, with the frequency content of the pad. See how that goes. I think. I think what we'll do is maybe just add yet another hype synth and just hype it up, yeah? So I'm gonna add another track. We're gonna go plug in. Uh, by default, it just loads the hype synth. We're gonna put, uh, see I'm on the second row. We're gonna put a clip there and I'll just make this a four bar clip. Um, now maybe we'll leave it at eight and maybe try to make a more um, robust lead or something. Let's go back into the uh, hype synth here and scroll uh, to the Flux again, so um, we want the presets. Let's go pluck light and see what we can come up with. All right, maybe we'll bring this down in the mix just a tad while we're scrolling. about scrolling through some presets and see if anything kind of gels with what we've got here. Here it's not bad. Hmm. I don't think that's the one, but it's very nice. That one sounds, that's kind of a nice sound.
to go ahead and record arm this track here. And I'm just going to press record. And I'm going to maybe just hope to get lucky putting something in. Oh, we'll see. No, it's not quite what I'm after. So... playing so we'll go shift and delete and whoops did I not get them all let's get them all shift and delete and we'll try that again trying to play something in here all right shift and delete cool let's try that again I wish I could use my voice to put the notes in you know all right let's delete that one Alright, let's try again and hope we get lucky. everything and then stop and delete that whoops select everything and select and delete that and let's give this another go come on dun, 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 dun. oh my goodness two three and Got some wrong notes in there, but more of what I'm after still. Let's find out if we can get rid of this note down here, and let's see what that does. Bum, bum, bum. Okay, so that part is right for sure. Yeah, let's just leave that for now. Let's go shift and clip. Yeah, all right. If we bring the cutoff down on this synth sound, we can get a little bit of a less maybe conflict with our pad sound and allow us to bring this up in the mix. Let's label this track while, while we're here. Let's just lead one. Whoa. And let's save at this time. And let's go ahead and put an effect on that lead. You guys guessed it. It is going to be that parametric EQ. And this is just a way that I keep my low frequency content of my tracks exactly where I want it to be. And I make sure that there's no extraneous, you know, low frequency content coming in from any other sources muddying up that low frequency content of my tracks. You guys remember that in the beginning, we made it so that the kick drum punches through the bass uh, as well using the mother ducker. So we're constantly just keeping um, that low end as tight as we can and keeping the drums really clean and punching through everything. I'm gonna go ahead and hear this on my speakers real fast. See how that new lead sound is doing.
So I think, whoops. So I think that that is sounding pretty darn good. And I really want to stress, um, you know, how much time I'll spend on the foundation of things. You know, when I'm working on my own, I'm really glad that I took the time to get the speakers going today so that we could get this foundation where I want it to be. Let's go ahead and save at this time. I think that's sounding pretty good. Can you guys still hear my voice okay over the music as we continue building up this track? I'm going to check in with the chat, and I appreciate you all hanging out with me as we're working today. I arrived late. Hey, what's happening, Jim? We're in the key of D pentatonic major today. And how we got there is we loaded up uh, some of the drum kits that are included uh, in the in the force. And we found some chords that sounded, you know, pretty cool. And we got a little groove going. Then we added like some kick and some hat and some other synthesizer sounds. But then when trying to get that whole groove sounding, you know, up to my um, level of quality, I was a little bit unhappy with the way that the original chord sample that started our groove sounded and they were a little bit maybe distorted to my ear to get up to the level in the mix that I wanted. So we went ahead and found some other sounds to just build around the groove and then we deleted those original chords. Now we're working with just some samples from my reflective sample pack for the drums and we've got three instances of the hype synth which is, the built w which is one of the built-in synthesizers uh, of the force today. Make sure that I'm saving uh, often as well. Uh, give the song some movement. Uh, let's see here. I'm for the string three note melody. Layer the melody a bit dirty on the lower register. Cleaner. Okay. Let's take a let's take a look here and see um, what we can get going um, here. We've got the bass, the pad, and the lead and the drums. So we've got a really nice, uh, st uh, you know, structure to build from. All right, what let's do is let's go ahead and assign the kick drum to the crossfader here so that any time, you know, during the, the track, I can pull that kick drum out for turnarounds and breakdowns and whatnot. If we go into the menu and we go to the macros page, uh, it's already on, uh, crossfader, cool, but there's a bunch of pages here. We've got the knobs page, the crossfader, the XY, the pad grid, and this envelope follower. Again, we get here by going to the menu and then going to the macros section. I want to mess with the crossfader, and I want it so that when I, you know, push it over to the right-hand side, uh, that it deletes the kick drum. So I've pushed the fader where I want it, you know, so it knows we're over here. I've uh, highlighted the B, which is where it's on, you know, when we scroll the fader all the way over. And we're going to add something that we'd like it to do, a command, you know. So I want this to be uh, on a track. It's going to be on our kick drum track. So here's where the labeling has come in handy. We've got a kick track, top, bass, pad one, lead one, you know. We want to affect the kick here with this. And yeah, I want to affect something on the mixer. I want to mute that kick drum. So whenever I, you know, push this pad over here, this mute changes from off to on. And now if I play the clip, as long as the crossfader is on the right hand side, we get no kick drum. And I can bring it back in by pushing it to the left hand side. So we can use that for turnarounds and whatnot. I go ahead and save at this time. All right, and what we're gonna do, I think, is, let's see here, let's listen to the variation between these two different sets of clips. <laughs> Let's go ahead and copy all of these down one row, shall we? If I go copy and then hit the launch key and hit that again, we can paste this row into the row beneath it. And I can do that same thing with our first row of clips as well. And now we've got three different rows of clips to work with. So if I launch this first scene here, It might be nice if we had like a, a more uh, subtle version of the chords to work with in the kind of beginning section. 
In fact, what we could maybe do is maybe we could even uh, solo the pad track, right? And if I play that now, yeah, we get just that wonderful, you know, pad there. What I want to do, I think, is I want to try to render that out on its own so that we can bring that back into the mix as a sample uh, piece of audio that then I can then uh, affect and mess with. I'm not exactly sure um, that I know how to do this, so let's give it a go. Let me just have a sip of coffee. And let's, let's see if we can make this happen. What I think I want to do is I think I just want to go to the, uh, what is it, the save tab, and we want to save, um, I basically want to get an audio mix down of what's playing here. Um, and I basically just want, like, oh, I don't know, eight, eight bars. Um, do it. Um, let's see here. Audio tail. Yeah, I don't want a tail. It's going to give me one anyway. That's not good. That means it's going to add to the uh, length of the sample uh, an extra second there. That's... Uh, that's kind of weird, and I wish there was a way to get rid of that, that's for sure. Um, or at least a way to, yeah, there we go. Okay, good deal, zero seconds. So I'm starting with bar one, and I'm gonna go all the way through bar eight. Uh, fantastic, cool, uh, let's see here. Wave format, 24-bit, yes, let's go ahead and export that. And let's see here, I want to put that, where do I want to put that? I'm going to put that into my hard drive. I've got a folder called Miscellaneous Samples. And we're at uh, 130 beats per minute right now. We're in the key of D major. So I'm just going to label this so that when I find it, you know, years later, this sample will have, you know, its uh, tempo and its key embedded into it. Uh, let's just call this 130 D major pad thing. One. Then we don't have to worry about you know accidentally uh, labeling something else with that same uh, name or something. We'll just put that into the miscellaneous samples folder there. Fantastic. What let's do then is go ahead and we're going to delete um, the pad. Let's go to the launch here and we're going to delete the pad sound from that very first scene. So now I should have just the bass and the drums. Uh, we're not hearing anything. It's because this is soloed, right? Yeah. All right, cool. And what I want to do now is I want to bring the pad back in on its own new channel. And I want to run a low pass filter on it so that as we, you know, begin the track, we're not introducing that pad at its full um, open state, per se. So let's see here. I want to add a new track, and I want to add a drum track so that I can load my samples onto the drum pads. And let's see here. If I just go um, and we create a clip by double tapping there, and we go into that clip, I want to make sure that the clip is, what, eight bars? Uh, it is by default. Fantastic. Um, and then if we go into note here, and I select a pad, I can go find the sample that we just exported on the hard drive here. Let's go um, Dean's hard drive, miscellaneous samples, and uh, let's You see know, I here. took that as a sign that I'd be ready for this. Um, okay, one more. Just on individual. So I ended up just hanging out by. Doesn't seem to be in this folder though, which is a little bit odd. Um, Dean's SD, Miss Samples. Yeah, it's not here. Um, okay. Well, that's interesting. Okay, let's try that again, because it didn't seem to render or save my sample. Hmm. Okay, well, let's try that again then. All right, we're going to go back to the matrix, and we're going to be in launch mode. Get that pad here, right? Is it this one? Uh, 
Okay, so I'm not sure why that didn't render. All right, so what I want to do is I want to get that pad sound into audio so that we can reload it into the project. So if I go to the Save tab and we go, um, you know, Audio, Mix Down, Start Bar, and I want to end at the end, of, come on, of bar 8. Do it. No tail. And I want to export that audio. 130 D major pad. And it even is trying to make it pad thing one now because it remembers that I saved it, you know, already. We're going to go into the miscellaneous samples folder. And I'm going to save it there. And hopefully, oh, I see it said exporting. A, I'm not sure if that's doing exactly what I want. I might be doing this, going about it wrong to get that audio is what I'm thinking maybe. But we're going to... um. We're going to find out by going back to try to load that piece of audio onto our pad here. I'm going to get rid of the solo mode, and we're going to go load, and then miscellaneous samples. And there it is this time. Fantastic. I'm not sure what I did uh, wrong to begin with uh, there. Um, let's see. Get our track going again. Yeah. Why am I, am I muted or something? I see. It's loaded. Okay. It's um. So rocking. Yeah. It's actually got it. It's just silent. One. So if I go into the menu now, then we should be able to see that. If that's the case. Uh, sample edit. Yeah. It's just silent. So I somehow I did that wrong. Still, no worries because we are making progress. So what let's do is we're going to go back to the matrix, right? We're going to go back to this launch. I just want that pad. So rather than Rather than solo the pad, this time I'm going to try to mute everything else, okay? I'm not sure why it's not, you know, giving me what I need here. Um, let's go to save. And I just want that audio mix down of that little part there. Here, on the mixer here, and export. I'm just going to call this, you know, pad thing two at this time so that there's no uh, conflict and we are sure which one we're loading. Uh-oh. Now it seems to be a little bit stuck on the... Oh, I see. I know what I did wrong there is the thing. I forgot to... Um, audio mix down. I forgot to change this here to just eight bars. Okay, no worries. Export. And then uh, call that two. Yes. Uh, yes. Okay, good deal. Let's try this again. And then, uh, let's see, if we go to load, and I want to put the pad here. Are we getting it? No, there's nothing there. Oh, my goodness. If anyone knows why this isn't actually rendering out the audio, let me know in the chat, because I would really like to, to do this. Um, let's go to, whoops, not track edit, but rather, but um, sample edit. Yeah, it's completely muted when I render it out. That doesn't make any sense. Uh, I'm going to check in with the chat real fast and see. Oh, I've lost my camera switchers now. That's not good. Ah, all right. And then the stream went sideways, y'all. Um, all right. So let's see here. Was the sample in MIDI and not audio? No, the, it's not a, I'm trying to create a sample, rather, um, by rendering out um, their plugin. I'm just not sure what I'm doing wrong. I'm obviously missing some little step here. Let's see. Because um, when I, you know, when I just play the groove, we're hearing um, that pad playing out. Um, I also don't know a way to just like resample into the machine what it's playing at the time. And that would be really handy too. Uh, there's so many things about this box uh, that I still need to learn. Um, and uh, apparently this is one of those things. Because um, when I launch it here, it's playing the pad sound for us. Uh, let's see here. 
Maybe I want to just save it as a sample. And let's go to Dean's uh, blah, 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 Miss Samples. Open that up again. Let's just call this pad thing three this time and see if I did it right this time. Okay. <laughs> let's see. Uh, let's go to uh, where I want to put it, which is... Um, Uh, which track is that? Oh my goodness. Uh, this new one here. Yeah, we still didn't get it for some reason. Boy, that is frustrating. I gotta learn uh, how to export uh, stuff again, apparently, because I am not doing it right. Uh, let's see here, this is triple check that. Yeah, pad thing three, and it's still just a completely muted piece of audio. All right, well, let me check and see how long we've been going today. Almost two hours. Uh, it might be playing out because it's in the buffer. Yeah, I'm just really not sure what I'm doing wrong. Um, I don't wanna um, you know, screw the stream here and take too much time, which I feel like I've already done um, trying to figure that out. Um, boy, but if we could get that happening, then that really would be nice to move this forward. Um, boy. Um, hmm. Okay, let me do one more thing. Yeah, what I'm going to try to do this time is we're going to try a completely different approach. I'm not going to mute anything or solo anything. What I'm going to do is, whoops, sorry about that. I hit the wrong button. We're going to hit save, and we're going to hit Ableton Live Set this time. And um, we're going to see uh, export MIDI as audio. Yeah, fantastic. And we want to include all this stuff. Uh, we don't want to uh, export a range as clips and no tail and then export and then we want to go to my hard drive and I'm just going to put this in the miscellaneous samples folder again I believe and we're going to call this oh I don't know temp set and basically what I'm thinking this is going to do is render all of these little clips to audio and then give us that clip to be able to load in as audio this may or may not work at this time and let's sort of find out what happens looks like um it's like I've done something wrong, though, because it's going to take forever to do. So let me... Oh, boy. Okay. Um, Ableton Live... Yeah, see, it's not going to give me the ability to tell it how long. So it thinks that the whole set is like a million measures long because when I go to whoops because when I go to save here and try to do the audio mix down see it wants to put us at 12,600 measures which isn't uh, correct you know we, we don't need that many um, I don't think that what I'm doing there will have any bit of a uh, difference that's just going to export the whole thing to get, yeah, hmm. Okay, so we've definitely hit another anomaly in my, or cap, uh, in my knowledge base of this machine. I don't know how to do what it is that I would want to do. So rather than just, you know, continual, continue to struggle and drag out the stream, you know, ad nauseum, I think we'll just start wrapping it up at this point, and I'll just sort of figure that one out uh, during the week or whatnot. We were able to get a pretty cool groove going today, and we've been streaming for a couple of hours. That's just it. Can you record the sample into the force? I would love to be able to do just that. But here's what happens if I go to audio track and say I want to just, you know, record something that we've got existing here onto this audio track. If I go to the mixer and I highlight that track and I click in and out, the only options that I get to route audio to this audio track are the actual external inputs of the Akai Force. So I've got, I could record from input one and two, I could record from input one or input two, and that's it. What I would really need for this to be like just magic would be a way to select, you know, um, 
resample the main output um, of this. You know, so anything that's playing just gets recorded. I'm not sure why they don't um, have that feature available or if there's a way to do it and maybe I just don't know how to do that yet. Um, but that's definitely um, an anomaly here at this point. I would really like to be able to, you know, get audio out of, you know, that we've created. I mean, I could put another box next to it and we could manually record the audio out, but that's like, you know, ridiculously tedious. Um, I'm sure there's a way to do what it is that I'm trying to do, but we've just hit sort of a cap today in my, in my knowledge of how to export the audio out. Um, you can sample your clip in the sampler. Now, that makes sense to me, Simon, and I really appreciate that tip. Thank you so much for being here at this magic moment with that magic tip. Let's check that out, folks. If I go to the sampler page and I tell it where I would like the input to come from, what sort of options do we get? And there it is, my resample. Ladies and gentlemen, let's have a round of applause for Simon, too good, in the chat. Absolutely fantastic, solving the problem. And I really appreciate that. Fantastic, let's move forward then. There it is, the resample. Okay, here's what we're gonna do. Thanks again, Simon, fantastic. Let's go ahead and mute everything that I don't want to play so that we have just the pad playing. And now we can see the level of the pad being recorded and everything. Simon for the win. All right. That is fantastic. Let's go ahead and arm this track for recording. It's going to get the whole eight bars here. Ooh, I'm going to get that tail and everything. Absolutely. And here we go, boy. This is a really big game changer for me to finally understand how to, you know, get audio back into it that we've already created. I can't say it enough. Thank you, Simon. All right. In fact, this is going to be Simon's resample. Cool. Fucking awesome. All right, let's go ahead and just, uh, we're going to keep that into the project, and we'll just call that Simon's resample for now. What I want to do then is try to bring that pad back in, like I was trying to do in the very first clip. To do that, we're going to go ahead and add a new drum sampler onto uh, the next available track here. We're going to put um, a clip in on the very first scene. Uh, by default, that's an eight bar clip, right? And that's cool, and that's what we want. Um, we're going to make sure, let's see here, uh, that nothing's muted or um, soloed, and then we'll save at this time, get that new sample embedded into the project, cool. Um, let's see, I'm on this track here, so note mode, and I just want to yeah, cool, and um, yes, we want to go load. No, no, no. Um, let's see, hold on, I'll remember. Uh, it's in the menu, and or is it just so? Uh, is it or is it edit and click? Yeah, it's edit and click, and then I can assign that sample, and let's grab it. Simon's resample. All right, and we can see that sample here, so I can go ahead and get the start point right where we want it. Fantastic. Okay, what I want to do is I want to put a low pass filter on this, but first, you know it, we're going to go with that parametric EQ, and we're going to grab this, and we're going to remove any frequencies that might you know, be conflicting in the low frequency range. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put another effect uh, on this, and of course it's going to be that low pass filter. So we're going to go ahead and go down to filters, and we're going to grab a low pass filter, select, and let's see here. It starts off at about 1500 uh, hertz or kilohertz. Why am I not hearing that? What have I done wrong here? That's weird. We definitely should have been hearing that. All right. 
low path filter select. There it is. Okay, so now I can, you know, completely filter this pad sound using that low pass filter. All right. So if we play uh, this first scene, let me stop here, with our just our bass and our hats, right? Right, okay. So what I want is I want this pad not to trigger, uh, not to hold rather, the sample for its entire length every single time I hit the pad. So I'm gonna see if we can't fix that in the, what is it, envelope section? Yeah, we're gonna change that. Um, let's see here. Uh, yeah, we're gonna change that to a note on instead of a one shot. Now we can put a little bit of release on that in the amp page. That sounds a lot better. Good deal. And we can um, remove a little bit more of these low frequencies from this one here. Bring that up to maybe 200. All right. Maybe bring the volume on this one down just a little bit. All right. Now we've got a variation on that pad that we can use for kind of the intro section to where we haven't actually introduced the pad sound to the listener yet. It's just the intro. So we can, rather than just, you know, hitting the listener with that entire pad, we can give them just a taste of it to start with. All right, let's go ahead and um, let's go ahead and create a clip. We've already got a clip. Let's make sure that we are armed for recording on this track. Let's put that in. And then let's maybe see if we can't go shift and what is it? Quantize? Quantize selected events. And let's see what that sounds like. I want to, let's see. We're getting very close to what I'm after here. All right, Simon, saving the day. Cool. I want to bring some more uh, low frequencies off of this sound, so it's just, you know, a shadow of what we're about to bring in, you know? And what I want to do is I want to send it to our reverb and our delay sends that we created in the mix. Yeah. So now we've, you know, sort of created a new sound. This is the key and why I wanted to do it that way. Oh, I have to lost the cameras again. Okay, this is sort of why I wanted to do it this way, is that when we're going to, you know, introduce that pad sound to the listener, they will have already been sort of familiar with, the, you know, that sound. And when it comes in in its full entirety, will really help, you know, take the groove and move it up to that next level. All right. Doing the cameras manually here. So here's our... Maybe bringing it down in the mix a little tiny bit. Yeah, we're getting there. And um, let's put an EQ on that as well. You guys can see here that, you know, my workflow, EQ is literally my most used tool. I use it more than any other tool, more than compression, more than delay, more than reverb. Literally every single sound in every single track that I make, whether it's on a box like this or whether it's in like, you know, Ableton or something, if I'm working in this sort of an environment where the tools are all available to me, every single sound is going to get its own EQ and is going to get, you know, thought of as having and needing its own place in that, you know, acoustic, sp oops, in that acoustic space that we're creating. Let me see if I can readjust this camera now that I've knocked it a bit. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's 
not liking that. I had it set so well, too. Okay, there we go. Good deal. That's a lot straighter. Okay. So, yeah, so every element has got its own, you know, space in the mix, and we're thinking of them um, individually and as how they're going to work together. Let's go ahead and uh, label this again. This is the, this track is now the pad resample. Resample, great. And let's go ahead and save everything in the project at this time. All right. <laughs> And now we're going to introduce the actual pad. Yeah, much, much better. All right. I think based on, you know, how much effect, though, that we're hearing on the pad sound, that I can get away with more in the beginning. Yeah, for sure. So let's... um. Let's see, it's on this pad here, edit. And let's put a little bit more sand of reverb and delay. Even a little more still. Even a little more still. All right, let's go. And I think, um, the volume on this um, sort of introductory sound could be a little louder to match the volume of our pad when it comes in. Let's find out. Yeah, I'm just trying to get those a little more even now. And let's save at this time. My uh, personal workflow is I do a, like pretty much a, about a 50-50 based on my ears and based on like some visual feedback that I'll get from having um, some visualizers open in Ableton Live. A lot of times, like when I'm working on these headphones, it's not necessarily, uh, you know, the best mixing environment. And I really suggest that if you're mixing on headphones or if you're mixing on monitors or even if you're mixing on little hi-fi bookshelf speakers, what's really the most important thing there is that you're using those speakers in kind of, or the headphones, in kind of your everyday music listening, you know, experiences, so that you're really familiar with how commercially released and produced music sounds on whatever, you know, speakers or, you know, monitoring environment you've got. We spent a little bit of time, you know, building this foundation, uh, turning on my monitors in the background so that I could adjust a few things that way. Uh, checking on different, you know, speaker systems, headphones versus any speakers you've got, you know, can also help you adjust some of these levels as you're working. But definitely, I'm about a 50-50 with maybe trusting my ears or, you know, not trusting my ears. At the end of the day, I'm probably going to trust my ears over the visuals, but I find that the visuals really help me get the sounds closer to where my ears want them to be, if that makes any sense. Um, cool deal. All right, so let's just see what we've got here. Maybe we'll add like um, another sound um, when the full pad comes in. Kind of considering it's, okay, I know what we'll do. Uh, we're basically trying to create some sort of a song flow then, you know. Um, these would be considered um, like scenes in Ableton. Each of these groups of clips is kind of like a scene that we can launch. So something we could do in our sort of intro, you know, beginning here that we're creating is maybe make a little bit of a variation on our kick drum. Currently, it's just, you know, always banging away the big uh, kick drum here. But what I could do is I could copy this to the pad next to it. Now, remember how I said that every single pad gets its own, you know, filters and effects. And that's why I love this kind of thing for producing and mixing outside of a computer. Because all the tools that we really need to do that to produce and mix are in this box already. So here's now I've copied our main kick drum to a second pad. But what I want to do is I just want to create a high pass version of our kick drum that doesn't have the super low frequency that we can just use um, for the intro. So I'm going to go 
you guessed it, we're going to load another parametric EQ. Again, this is a EQ is my most used effect out of any other effect. And here we're just going to kind of use our ears. We're just going to kind of get this into a different, you know, a state where it's not really, you know, banging away. Maybe a little higher still. And maybe um, also on this one, maybe we'll adjust the envelope um, so that the attack is a little softer. Yeah. Just like a three. Cool. So what I'm going to do is in this first uh, clip here, if we go to, whoops, if we go to the matrix and I'm in this first clip here, fantastic. I just want to, I just want to, let's see here. I just want to have all of these selected. Right, and I just want to transpose these up one so that they'll go to the next pad on this clip instead of the first pad. So now on this intro, we've got a high pass version of the kick drum. We might want to bring up the um, the frequency a little bit more on that now that we can hear it in the mix. Just tucking it way back, right? So that this is an intro um, and not, you know, the main groove. We're sort of introducing the listener to what sort of music this is going to be, you know? I think we want to affect our pad as well and maybe filter this down a little bit more so that it's just tucked behind the bass and that when we bring in our next scene you know we'll really get an idea of what the pad is doing in one two one two three let's go and now we're bringing in you know sort of the full kind of element there I often find, though, that to help those transitions, what we really need, you guessed it, is that sort of impact crash type of sound. And to create that, we're going to go ahead and just bring in a brand new track. We're going to make this a drum machine as well. And we're just going to label this before we get started. Let's go ahead and label this effect. OK, and we're going to close that. And we're going to go back to the mixer. And you guessed it, I'm going to put a parametric EQ on this. Every single track gets its own EQ. And every single sound in my songs on every single track gets its own EQ. What I want to do is I want to do the same thing we've been doing. I want to remove um, like any possible super low sub frequencies from hanging out on the sound that we're about to put in. And we're going to go. Let's see, let's go um, load and um, what I want to do is I want to load, I have a, like a default um, effect sound. I have like a default noise crash sound that I use uh, very often. And we're going to try to grab that. Yeah, there it is. And let's see, we're going to make this uh, track lower in volume. Whoa, quite a bit. <laughs> All right, and we're just going to try to put that on the downbeat to kind of kick off the transition here. So what I'll need to do is to create a clip. I think by default that'll be an eight bar clip. And all I need to do is just put this on the downbeat here. We can just do that manually, go in and just put a little dot on the downbeat. And now, you know, when I click, uh, let's see here. When I go between these two, uh, you know, clips, we're going to get that impact on the downbeat, uh, just every eight bars. And I'm going to go ahead and copy that as well to the next scene beneath it as well. So let's hear that in context. I think we'll need to get just a tiny little bit more level on this. And also, um, let's see, if I go back to note, I can go edit and we can um, maybe just soften up that attack the tiniest little bit as well. Uh, in fact, you guessed it, I'm gonna put a specific uh, EQ just on this sound, parametric EQ, and I'm gonna go into uh, the high frequency roll off, and I'm gonna roll off anything beneath about 1000 kilohertz on this sound. So it's just that you know high frequency sort of impact sound that we're getting there. Um, that's more what I'm after. Okay, let's hear this in context, shall we? And play the intro part here.
That's sounding exactly like what I'm after. But let's do a tiny little bit of extra stuff with that sound uh, while we're here, shall we? Uh, let's see. I want to um, make sure that we're on the right track and in note mode. Um, what am I doing wrong here? Oh, I see. Right here. Yeah. Um, okay, right. So um, I just want to go. Cool. I just want to put a tiny little bit of the effects sends on that so that it's going to our reverb and our delay that we have on send one and two. Just a little bit of those to give this sound, you know, to fit it into the acoustic space that we've created, rather. Exactly. There we go. Fantastic. Okay. Now, I think to help that transition between... Um, sort of like our row of clips one, and then where the crash comes in on our row of clips two, what well, might be nice if we had some sort of like a, a riser so like the, uh, the listener can sort of feel the momentum, you know, building. And then when we drop into the second clip, you know, that sort of pays out. So we get that ebb and that flow, we get that tension and that release. Okay, so what let's do is um, on the effects sound uh, track that we just added the crash on, let's add a second sound. I'm going to put a sound on the pad next to that by going edit. And um, it says edit pad 2 there. Fantastic. I have a folder with a, a bunch of, you know, go-to effect sounds that I use. And um, I believe I have some risers that might be synced to tempo already. We're at 130 BPM. So what I want to try to do is see if I have a riser at that uh, tempo. I don't. I have one at 128 BPM ready to go, though, which is pretty close. So what we're going to do, I think, is just change our tempo from 130 to 128. And see, also, we're going to change the note here to D because we're in the scale of D uh, major. And um, let's see here. Now we've got a little bit of a riser sound. Sort of that, you know, kind of just builds up the momentum there. And if I click on this sound, you guessed it, we could add an EQ on it. And what I want to do is air para EQ. I just want to do what we've been doing and remove any of the low frequency content on this sound beneath about, well, I don't know, 700 uh, kilohertz or whatnot. And we can maybe bring this down in the mix a tiny bit. And to help our stereo field also, maybe we can uh, pan the riser a little bit to the left and our crash a little bit to the right. Therefore, we kind of get a movement across the speakers as these uh, sounds happen to keep the you know interest in the stereo field. This is just really subtle stuff here now. We're going to pan the riser a six left, and we're going to pan the crash. I'm sorry, I'm doing that backwards. We're going to pan the riser. Uh, let's see, six. I'm going to make it a little more dramatic. Let's go seven left and seven right. Cool deal. Now, lastly, let's go into this mute target section and let's make sure that when um, the crash symbol hits, that it completely turns off our riser and there's no chance of these sounds like ever playing together at the same time. So let's have this sound. When it plays, it'll turn off the second pad. And let's have, when pad two plays, let's have it turn off pad one. And now they'll never play over each other. Whenever I hit one, it will stop the other pad. Let me go ahead and save our project at this time. Now, let's uh, go ahead and figure out how many bars this riser is. It's probably like a four bar riser. So if I go into uh, our, make sure we're in the, the first clip here. And actually, there isn't currently an, uh, a clip there, so I'll need to create one. By default, that's going to create an eight bar clip. All I need to do is to go in and put our uh, riser sound to start on the beginning of the downbeat of measure five. And because I believe it to be a four bar riser, and we're going to find out now. I'm going to go ahead and launch this clip. <laughs> Let's start that riser now. A 
okay. It's actually just a two bar riser. So I'm gonna go ahead and scoot it over here instead of four bars. Now it's gonna play out for two bars. And what we're gonna go ahead and do is save at this time. And I'm gonna just check in with the chat real fast, see if I'm missing anything. Are the levels still okay that we're spitting out? Can you guys hear me? Does the force have built-in templates? Um, it does have some built-in templates for like certain genres uh, where they'll load up like some loops that go together and stuff like that. There's also a whole bunch of like, um, you know, uh, extra sound banks that Akai sell and other vendors sell for machines like this. There's a company called, um, I'm pretty sure they're called Niche Audio. And they have a huge selection of sample packs that are specifically formatted for like the MPC Live, the Force, the Machine. And what you'll get is you'll get like, um, you know, 16 sounds that sort of go, you know, together for you to create, you know, grooves and stuff with. Um, you have to go when you're using those, you know, you have to go with you know, the, whoever sound designed to those sounds, you have to go with that's the quality of those sounds. But I think the niche audio stuff is pretty solid. And definitely they have lots of like different genre stuff that's formatted already. They have like, I'm sure they have like drum and bass packs and like some like EDM packs and stuff like that, where you could just load up a kit and then you'll have 16 sounds that are, you know, meant to work together, um, right loaded up that you can work from, absolutely. All right, um, cool deal. All right, so let's go ahead and take a listen to this in its entirety now. We're gonna play it uh, clip one, we're gonna play that into clip two, and then we're gonna play that into clip three where we added our lead sound. Take a listen to what we've built today. <laughs> I think we'll add a clap next because we never did get that sort of a, you know, backbeat sound going. Oh no, we did. There it is. And it sounds pretty good too. All right. All right. That's pretty cool. What let's do is keep the arrangement going. And let's go ahead and just copy that row of clips down to another row of clips. What let's do is, um, you know, let's think about the arrangement for a moment. We're bringing in, um, you know, introducing the listener to our sounds. We're introducing them to the bass and the pad and the drums a little bit in the beginning. Then we hit them with the full drums and we hit them with the full pad. Then we introduce the lead. Let's go ahead and delete the lead in the next section, but what let's do is go ahead and add some extra percussion. So let's bring up uh, let's bring up our clip here for the tops, and here currently we have like uh, an open hat and the clap sound, and what let's do before we actually load another sound is just save, and let's go to note mode here, so we've got, yeah, here's our sounds. What I want to do now is bring in like a shaker, something that we can put in on the 16th notes and kind of keep building up the momentum and variety as we scroll through the arrangement here. So let's go ahead and just select pad four. We're going to click load. And let's see here. We're going to go, where are we going to go? Let's go into my folder of uh, sample packs from Electrona Sounds. And let's go back into the reflective sample pack. The reflective sample pack I find really useful because it's just uh, one shot. So it's really easy to like add a sound um, out of the blue, or it's really easy to like write stuff from scratch uh, with, with this particular sample pack. What I want is I want to find a shaker. So let's go into the hats folder and see if I have anything maybe even labeled as shakers. Yeah, I do at the end here. So I'm going to play the groove and see if any of these like shakers kind of gel with what I'm hearing in my mind. First one, maybe. Ooh. Yeah, it's the third one there. All right. What let's do 
is let's make it a little bit more interesting though. Let's copy this to these two pads here and let's delete it from this pad here. Cool. Now I've got two variations of this uh, shaker. And what let's do right off the jump is you guessed it, let's EQ it. Let's put um, an air parametric EQ on this one and let's put an air parametric EQ on the next one. All right. Let's go ahead and affect the first one and bring out any low frequency content beneath about 600 hertz. And let's do that same thing with the second one as well, bringing out any low frequency content beneath about 600 hertz. Okay, and let's also uh, make the first one a little bit darker by removing some of the high frequency content. Let's do that on the other page. So let's do that uh, here. Where is this shelf? Yeah. Yeah, that's what I want. And let's also go to the master page and let's do a little bit of panning on these shakers. So that shaker one is like, oh, I don't know, four to the left. Now, we're not doing extreme panning, okay? These go all the way to 50. So we're doing really, really subtle panning just to kind of keep um, these sounds off of that dead center stereo space in our mix where the kick drum and the clap are living right in that center. We're just kind of giving, uh, by doing this, you know, it not only provides that tiny little bit of interest to these sounds, but it gives that tiny little bit of space to the other sounds. And you'll see, you know, that as I'm producing and mixing, pretty much every step of the way is just when I'm adding new sounds is making sure that like, our kick drum and the original sounds are still punching through as hard as they can. Let's go ahead and save at this time. And I think we're going to need to bring these down in the mix quite a bit. Before we do that, though, let's send both of these to our reverb and our delay sends that we set up. And let's turn these up to like 10 on each. So we've got, yeah, just a tiny little bit of reverb in the mix and delay on those happening. Um, let's bring, now let's bring the volume on this first one down. And now we have that sort of sort of back and forth kind of built into those sounds. Let's go ahead and save at this time as well. I'm just going to play this clip here and see about like how we might slot these shakers in. <laughs> I think just sort of a clip like that will get us where we need to go. It's a two bar clip, no problem. Okay. So we've got our uh, shakers in the mix there. And what I want to do is just see if I can't highlight. Come on. Hello. If I can't highlight these shakers and then go shift and quantize. Quantize selected events. Fantastic. Now what we can do is really, you know, listen to these shakers and try to get them in the mix. Let's go ahead and do that. Because they're a little bit loud, I think, now. What I want to do is I want to tuck the shakers behind the open hi-hat so that they're not like fighting with it and conflicting with it, but that they're kind of existing underneath it. And that the hi-hat is still the more prominent percussion sound. And I think we're getting there. Just need to do a little bit more EQ on those shakers, I think, and pull them back a little more. What let's do is... Is 
I clap too loud, I think maybe? Yeah, maybe pull that clap back a tiny little bit so it's not fighting quite as much. All right. Take one second. Hear this on the monitors. We are sounding pretty good today. This isn't necessarily like my normal, you know, vibe. It's got a different key and a major vibe. So it's a little, you know, happier and maybe groovy. Um, hope you guys are digging the way that it sounds. All right. Um, let's keep going. Let's see what else we could do. Did I save? If not, let's do that. Maybe now we could squeeze in an arpeggio or something like that. That might be too much, but it might be awesome. Let me think about this. Yeah, let's, let's, let's see what we can come up with here. Let's bring in another plug-in. Let's go plug-in. All right. Let's put in a clip and let's go shift clip to get us uh, up to that hype synth. And let's uh, double click on the preset section here. And let's, oh cool, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, how about this? They've got a section here for Leeds uh, Summer and Leeds Soft. Which do you guys think we should try to scroll through? Should we check out some soft leads or should we check out some summer leads? What do you think? Need a breakdown before second part arpeggios. Hey, fantastic suggestion. All right, we're definitely going to see if we can get that in. I love it. That's great. Should we go soft leads, guys, or should we go summer leads? I have no idea, you know, what these presets are going to sound like. Sometimes that's the fun of scrolling through sounds, is you might, you know, find something that you weren't necessarily expecting that sort of gels with what you've created already. Excuse me while I get a sip of coffee there. All right, we don't have necessarily any votes coming in. So let's check out these summer leads real quick and see what happens. Whoops, did I pick that right? Lead summer. All right, good deal. Let's hear what some of these leads sound like. Maybe we'll need to bring the volume down in the mixer for scrolling. Oh boy. All right, let's check out some of these presets. That sound. Hmm, I'm not sure about these notes though. I'm not necessarily as versed, you know, as playing melodics on these pads. So I think I kind of um, tend to do a lot of the samey, samey type of patterns with my fingers. keep scrolling through some other sounds. I did like that one though. Way too EDM. I kind of like 
this. It's maybe too dramatic, though. Yeah, too dramatic, but it's cool. <laughs> lot of different sounds in here. I hope you guys can hear just the wide variety of sounds that's ready to go in this hype synth. I was using, you know, mostly my own sounds and samples in the force, um, but recently I've started trying to, you know, scroll through these synthesizers a little bit more, and there's some pretty decent sounds in here. <laughs> Maybe like a tropical vibe on that one. I mess with the release time on this. Put a little something in for fun here. Just make sure we're armed on that track for recording. And let's give it a go. Let's go. Yeah. All right. Let's get rid of that and try again. Let's go ahead and grab all of these and go shift and delete. And let's try that again. All right, make sure I got everything there. Cool. Still trying to decide which octave I like better as well. I think this lower octave is where we're going to go here. All right, let's see if we can come up with something. simple something this time. Let's see how that sounds. It's like I got an extra note in here at the bottom. Let's get rid of that. All right, shift and delete that. Whoops, I undo. Whoops, did I screw that up too much? To... No, there's our lead back. Let's get rid of that one. There we go. Bum, bum, bum. Eh, not the best lead there for sure. Let me try again. Let me try again. Let me try again. We definitely can come up with something better than that, I think. Shift and delete. All right. Let's try this row here. All right. Let's try it again. And. Yeah. 
something really simple. Yeah, I think this one might work. Let's go to the mixer. And let's put an EQ on this, shall we? All right. Right, and we definitely want to get this uh, new sound to the existing effects sense that we've created, the uh, delay and the reverb sense that we set up earlier. We can probably give quite a bit of uh, reverb and delay actually to this new sound. Let's find out. <laughs> That's our delay. Yeah, and this one beneath it is our d reverb. Context now. track real fast because currently it's just labeled plugin one uh, plugin four still so let's just call this uh, synth flute for now all right and close and then save get our save on at this time all right let's see here I wonder if we could maybe um, like take away this, uh, if maybe we could take away our pad sound when our synth flute comes in to give um, you know room in the frequency spectrum, like take away some of those mid frequencies to add um, you know to give space for that new sound to exist in. Let's see what happens when we do that. I'm going to delete um, the pad so that when the flute starts, the pad stops, and let's see how that affects the transition. Transition. Let's also um, go into, yeah, cool. Let's also go into this clip here um, b with this transition, and let's put in the um, the riser, that backwards riser. It's a two-bar riser, and it's on uh, pad number two here. So I can just put it right there on the downbeat of measure seven. So uh, as this clip is playing, it's going to build up to the, you know, th that uh ebb and that flow, that rise and that, you know, release, tension and flow, all that kind of stuff, you know, starts happening there. Let's um, listen to this in context, whoops, um, from uh, scene three to scene four here, now that I've added that riser and we've taken away the pad when the flute starts and see if that's, you know, too dramatic of a change or whether that's working for us. <laughs> Yeah, it works, um, but it's a lot more dramatic. So that flute was a little bit too loud coming in, but I'm liking this. Two, three, and... Okay. So what I want to try to do is I just want to try to get the transition between these two scenes of clips to be a little bit smoother. 
Yeah, what I want to do, I think, to make this transition a little bit smoother is to kind of have a rest in the kick drum part um, right before, yeah, this is a, um, okay. This is an eight bar pattern, but our kick drum is a four bar pattern currently. So all I need to do is go shift and double, and we double the length of that kick drum pattern to an eight bar pattern. Now, why did I do that? I'd like to create a rest. So we pause the kick drum for two bars before the new part comes in. So we give the listener like a rest to kind of know something is about to change. And then when it does, there's that ebb and flow, you know what I'm saying? So we're gonna go ahead and delete, uh, delete those kick drums here. So we're creating a rest in that second, um, you know, in that second part of this pattern before we go into the next pattern. All I need to do now, whoops, is uh, also do that same thing with the tops. So if we go back into the matrix, okay, tops and clip. And what I wanna do is I wanna create that same sort of a two bar rest uh, in our percussion. So this is currently just a two bar pattern. I wanna make it an eight bar pattern. So I'm gonna go shift and double, double length to four bars. I'm gonna do that one more time. Shift and double, double length to eight bars. Now, when I sc you know, scroll out, we can see that we've got a full eight bar pattern. But what I wanna do is I want these last two bars of that to take a rest and not play at all. So we're just gonna highlight those two bars of notes and delete those. So now, when we're playing through these clips, we've got a little bit of a rest. And what that lets the listener know is it really lets you know like something is about to change. And then when we drop the pad and introduce the lead, it feels a lot more natural and less dramatic. Let's try that again. <laughs> What's up, Tony? <laughs> I, I might, okay, so that stopped a full two bars before the end. I might, I feel like that might have been too soon, and maybe we want just a one bar break. Let me check that out again. You really focus on it this time. Yeah, I like it with the with the break there. Okay. So what I want to do is I don't want the pad to go away entirely. I feel like maybe that's too dramatic. So what we could maybe do, what we could try, is we can try to copy our um, variation from the intro that we created by resampling, thank you, Simon, by resampling the audio from our pad sound and maybe we can just bring in a variation instead of dropping it entirely. Let's hear that in context. <laughs> And maybe what we could do, let's see, that's, yeah, okay. I'm going to copy that whole row. I'm on the wrong camera here. I'm going to copy this whole row of clips down. Um, and what we're going to do is we've now introduced the lead. We've got all these pads happening and stuff. I think what we're going to do is copy the pad back down and delete the variation of it. But we're going to do a breakdown, which Soup Aju suggested. And we're going to grab this clip here. Yeah. And what we're going to do is we're going to delete all of these kicks except for that downbeat kick. So we're still going to leave that in on the downbeat, but this is going to help us create a bit of a break here. And then maybe we'll need to um, have our top rest for this as well. Wait a minute. Okay, hold on. Let's see here. Um, maybe what I want to do is change the order of these clips a little bit. Yeah. 
Yeah, it is. I do. Okay, so we're going to copy this here and then delete this here. And I'm definitely on your page today, Soup Aju. We're going to do a breakdown before we introduce, um, or maybe as we're introducing. Let's see here. We've got this clip three here, which introduces our lead. All right. And then after this, we'll go into the breakdown. Yeah, and, yeah, okay, now, okay, now we're getting somewhere. I definitely want to go back, and I want to take um, these, and I want to make them not have a two-bar break, but just a one-bar break. Let's see if we can make that happen. So if I kind of zoom in at the end here, and we go duplicate, then I can nudge these into place, right? Uh, yep, and then there's just a one bar pause at the end of that one. We can do the same thing with the kick drum. Yep, we can go in here and we can select these last, maybe delete this one, shift and delete. Maybe we can select these and go shift and duplicate and scoot them over. And then we just want that last, we just want one more. Maybe I can just put that in manually. Nope. All right. No worries. I'll just go shift and duplicate. And then we'll put that right there on the downbeat. Now we've got just a one bar pause going into the break pattern, which is now pattern uh, scene four. That's a really good suggestion. All right. Let's try that. All right, I want to actually hear this in full context. Let's go ahead and save. I've made quite a bit of changes here. And we're just going to start at the beginning and kind of scroll through what I've created so far. Wait a minute, did we not have our, no, we have our crash there, okay, let's check in, I didn't think I heard it quite as much as I needed to. This one, yeah, I'm going to bring that up in the mix just a tiny little bit. Yeah. Let's go. That's what I want. I'm going to drop the pad completely. And let that flute play. And then let's build the back. Here we go. Yeah. All right. I think maybe what we need is maybe we need, let me save. Maybe what we need is like a little bit of a snare roll or something um, on uh, this set of clips number four here leading us in to the sort of, you know, building us up into that main drop there. Let's see here. So this is an eight bar loop and I might put this snare, uh, we're going to bring a new snare, I think, into the mix. I think we'll put this on the tops track. And the clip we're going to want to put it in is definitely the clip that's highlighted now. This is just a two-bar clip, and I'm going to want it to be an eight-bar clip. So we're going to go shift and double, double length to four bars. We're going to go shift and double again, double length to eight bars. Now we can zoom out and we can see that pattern. Fantastic. Let's go ahead and save the project. Now we want to go to the note mode of that, and so I could add a new sound. This would be like a snare that we can use for a build-up snare. So maybe like a, you know, like a really typical 808 snare or 909 snare kind of, you know, housey thing might work here. Um, let's play the groove and see if we can't find a snare drum. This is 
kind of an interesting snare drum. But what maybe we could do is maybe we could still do something more interesting with this roll that I'm trying to create. Maybe we could copy the snare drum and copy it again and copy it one more time. Fantastic. What let's do now is let's make a pitched snare roll. I love being able to just copy the samples and then make variations of them inside of, you know, the Akai Force or the MPC Live or whatnot. Um, so let's go ahead and go to our edit and we're going to go to the master page here and we're going to go ahead and we're going to leave the first snare as it is. But we're going to take the second snare and we're going to tune it down. We're going to take the I see it's wanting to do it to all of them. Um, where is that? Um, hmm. uh, maybe I can do it here instead. Yeah, we can do it here instead. No worries. Cool. Um, so I just want to bring the pitch down on these other snares. All right, so you see how we have like a down pitch now. And the pitches change. Um, that's kind of a neat, fun thing we can do. And yeah, you better believe it. We're going to put a, what do you call it, a parametric EQ on every single one of these pads. We're going to turn this on here. And we're just going to remove any lows this time from about uh, 62. Um, cool. And what let's do is go ahead and just put that really quickly on all four of these um, pair EQ. About 62, I said. Third one. These are the things that will help your track, you know, add up to a well polished track in the end. When you take the time to do these little tiny polishes along the way, that's how you get a polished, finished track. When you learn these little details that will help your mix, and then you take the time as you're building to utilize those details. And a lot of these things are things that are so subtle that you don't even really necessarily hear the difference as you're creating them. But, you know, there's absolutely no possible way that these, you know, sounds will have any low frequency content that might ever conflict with like our bass or our kick drum or whatnot. And it's just a way to really be sure about things. And I definitely take that extra time to set things up that way. Well, let's do before we, uh, you know, start trying to put these snares in is let's send these uh, to our reverb and our delay. Let's see if we can get away with like a 10. Maybe that's maybe too much. Let's start with just seven on these. And let's send um, seven to the delay and seven to the reverb on uh, each of these different snare sounds now. Okay, seven and seven. It's probably going to be too much. Let's go five on the uh, delay instead. And we'll adjust that, you know, as needed. Um, another thing that we can do is if we want, you know, we can adjust the panning on these so that the roll goes like across the, the speakers and the stereo spectrum. That's kind of a fun thing to do. We can like, you know, start by taking the first one, maybe making it 20 left. And then the second one, maybe making it 10 left. And then the third one, maybe making it 10 to the right. And the last one, maybe making it 20 to the right. And now they kind of snare sort of roll across the speakers and we get just a little bit more interest in the sound that we're you know hopefully about to create here I got a little save on and then we're going to um, let's see we're going to want to put that in this clip here and we're going to want to be uh, either build like a I don't know like a two bar snare roll at the end or a one bar snare roll at the end I'm just going to kind of listen to the clip and see what I feel that we should add here <laughs> I'm just going to put that in manually. I'm going to make sure that we're on for recording. All right. And now we've got, whoops, excuse me. Now we've got uh, that roll uh, put in there. And what I can do is I can just sort of, whoops, I can just sort of, I can just sort of highlight those, whoops, these notes 
only, right? And I can click Shift and Quantize. I'm pretty sure I had it on, but let's just make sure, you know. Now, if we play that clip, I can see if I need to maybe adjust the, you know, volumes or anything like that or the effects amount on those snares or whatnot. <laughs> All right. Here we come. Sounding really, really nice. So I think we're going to leave that. And when I put in a roll like this, I often like to really hear things in context. A lot of writing for me is a lot of what we're doing right now. It's just like putting in parts and then really hearing them in context, like playing a bit of the track before that roll so that when that roll hits, we can really hear. Is that too loud? Is it loud enough? Is it making the right kind of impact that we want when the next row of clips comes in? And let's go ahead and just play what we've created now from the beginning and see if the, you know, flow is working for us. Kick here. That flute seems pretty loud, huh? And now we've introduced the full groove. being able to drop that kick anytime I want, that's for sure. Yeah, absolutely. This might be a time, let's see, this might be a time that we could, um, you know, add another arpeggio starting. Um, what I think we need to do is bring that lead down a tiny little bit still. Let's try that and save at this time. All right, maybe we'll try to add one more arpeggio before we call it today. We've been going, let's see here, just over three hours now. Uh, definitely want to thank Simon. Uh, we were going to call it maybe about an hour ago, but I found, uh, you know, the way to get through to do what I wanted. Thanks to that suggestion from resampling in the sampler, Dean. Oh, my goodness. Really appreciate that. So now we're able to move, you know, quite a bit forward today and sort of evolve this groove that we've created from, you know, complete scratch. Obviously, the, the flow and the way that, you know, these scenes flow together um, is really an important thing. And I would, you know, if I was writing on my own, I would sit here and take all the time I need, you know, to pause sounds or, you know, to put in accents to make sure that all of these transitions, when we go to like the next set of clips, you know, that everything is flowing and working properly. If things are happening too fast, I'll add, you know, more sets of clips and try to, like, introduce the elements more slowly. Whatever we need to do, um, I find that the arrangement part and trying to get it to ebb and kind of flow, like, in a good way is often one of the most difficult things for me personally in writing, whether I'm writing, you know, with a hardware box or whether I'm writing in a DAW. And all of those details that kind of help the sections 
organs, you know, flow together and sound natural are what I end up spending quite a bit of time on, you know, when I'm working on my own. But let's see if we can maybe add one more uh, arpeggio sound. Let's try to use the hype synth again and see if we can't get uh, just one more thing going today uh, before we call it. All right. Let me switch back over to the overhead cam. And let's go back to the matrix here. And I just want to bring in one more plugin. And by default, that's going to be uh, a hype synth. That's fine. And uh, let's put a click here. <laughs> All right. And what we're going to do is we're going to turn on the arpeggio for this sound. Uh, shift and note. Maybe I have to be in the matrix for that to happen. Shift and note. Uh, let's see here. I want to be on this one here. Shift and note. There we go. And we are, in fact, in D pentatonic major by default. Fantastic. Um, so now we can just kind of scroll through. Actually, what I want to do is turn the arpeggio on here. Let's enable the arpeggio. And let's maybe bring the volume of this track down. All right. And let's just kind of see what happens. <laughs> lower so that it gives the lead more space in the mix. strikes me. Hmm. Yeah, we could maybe filter this in and out. I like this. Here we go. That's the word. got a little bit of an arpeggio part that we can try to get into the mix a little bit. We're going to bring it down and I'm going to go to the effects page and you guessed it, we're going to add a parametric EQ. We're going to go parametric EQ and we're just going to bring out some of the low frequencies beneath about, you know, 60 hertz on that new sound. So I think I want to bring it down in the mix as well still. Listening to a real low for a sec here. Because what I want for this new sound is I want it to be behind um, our existing lead. We don't want this sound to just take the foreground because the existing lead is already doing that. We're going to go ahead and label this at this time. This is ARP1, and we'll save. We're going to go ahead and save. All right, fantastic. Um, let's see here. <laughs> Yeah, I really like the way that it I really like the way that it sounds if we filter the cutoff 
down and uh, you know back up again. There's no uh, easy way to do that inside of the Hypesynth, like super easy to do exactly what I want to do. So we're going to do this using the global envelope followers, which we can um, turn into uh, 16 global LFOs if we want to do that. And we're going to do that right now by going menu and going macros. We're going to go over to the envelope follower tab. Now here it says envelope source. We can create 16 different envelope followers uh, globally inside of the force. And we can use like existing tracks to create an envelope shape so that it follows um, like uh, the rhythmic or, you know, sonic, um, you know, um, shape of the kick drum or the hi-hat or, like, other sounds. But what we want to do is we want to change the envelope not to follow something that's already existing. We want to just double, t whoops, we want to just, yeah, here, we, where is that at? Come on now. Envelope source. There we go. It's, we want to go to LFO. And that's what we want to use as the source for this. We don't want to use a sound to generate like an envelope. We just want to assign basically a long, slow sine wave, or actually triangle wave, I think would be more appropriate here. Just nice triangle. And we'll turn um, the envelope follower on. Here we can see, you know, the speed of that triangle wave. We want this to be very, very, very slow. So if I start scrolling the frequency to the left way down here, we can go down to like, say, 0.04 or something. And you can see now what we're getting is we're getting a very slow evolution of this LFO. And we want to assign that to the cutoff of our new lead synth so that very slowly as our mix is playing, it is affecting the cutoff knob at the speed that we're seeing here. Uh, all we need to do to make this happen is just add you know, a, uh, a destination to the envelope follower. Uh, we want this to be on a track. The track is here's definitely uh, a benefit of labeling the tracks, you know. Um, this is uh, our arpeggio one is the track that I want to affect. And I believe we want to go to the edit. And I believe we want to go to the cutoff. And now I've assigned um, this, uh, you know, triangle shape LFO to the frequency cutoff of the hype synth. And here we see the percentage, uh, you know, just changing uh, as the uh, LFO is changing. If I bring up our hype synth, we can actually look at the knob. I'm not sure if you can see that on the stream, but the knob is actually moving very slowly now. And the knob, the cutoff knob is turning all the way to the bottom and then very slowly going all the way back to the top again. It's pretty much doing what we want in that the speed of the you know knob movement is very slow and gentle, but it's going all the way to the top and then all the way to the bottom. And we don't really want that. If it goes all the way to the left, you know, the sound will completely filter out. So if we go back to the macros page and we're back to the same page, we can adjust down here at the bottom the parameter range. And this is so important for setting up these global LFOs and stuff. We can tell it to not take that knob all the way down. We can say, oh, I don't know, when you go all the way to the left, maybe 30%, you know, uh, uh, of that knob should already be, you know, shouldn't go down beneath 30% per se. And maybe when we scroll up, maybe the knob shouldn't go above 90%. And what we end up with is, well, to actually tries 40 and 90 by default. We end up with a lot more gentle, um, you know, knob movement and less, you know, filter uh, cut off in the mix, just so we get that little bit of subtlety on that lead sound. I'll need to adjust these as we start hearing it, you know, in the mix. And here we go now. Now, let's see here. What we're listening for is just the way that the filter is moving on our new sound. We're not really hearing a lot of movement yet. We hear a little bit of movement now. Okay. I think I'd like it to go down a little further 
So we just have to adjust the parameter range. I want that knob to go a little further left. So instead of 40, we're going to have it go to 35. And I don't want it to go up quite as much. So now we're going to go 35 to 85%. And then again, it's just how much of that knob is moving now that we've got the speed set to where we like it. Yeah, we're getting a little movement in that sound now as the filter gently you know, moves around. And it's still tucked behind our lead sense. Yeah, I'm gonna bring it down in the mix. And I'm just gonna shave a tiny little bit more of low frequency content off of that new arpeggio sound, just very subtly in the very low frequencies, just so that it kind of slots into the mix. Yeah, there we go. That's what I'm looking for. Let's go ahead and save at this time, and then let's hear this in an actual context, so that when you know we get the, the roll coming into that new lead and all of those elements, and we can see how that sounds. I'm gonna go ahead and just start from the very beginning again. No repeat, yeah, that's good too. Built up a pretty cool groove today. It even kind of loops back on itself pretty well. That very first build up and transition isn't exactly like perfect per se. I'm not exactly sure what I would do to finesse that, but I would definitely finesse it a little more. Breakbeat here it might be fun. It's like a high pass break. Yeah, actually, I kind of like that. Or maybe a layered sound to mimic the flute lead here to make it bigger. Would be nice too. All right, not bad. I'd say we built a pretty nice little starter groove today. This is about 
oh, three hours and 20 minutes we've been streaming. Not bad. We went over, you know, a few of the anomalies that I've been having with the Force. We solved a really big one today, thanks to Simon. Big, big ups to Simon for helping me figure out uh, that recording. That's really a big one in the workflow for me to be able to, you know, record anything that I've already created and then make variations of that. That's really handy. I'm so glad I got that figured out. Thank you, Simon. All right. Let's see here. I'm going to try to check in with the chat real fast. Were all of the sounds from the force? Um, yes and no. Uh, the drum sounds today were from just one of my sample packs um, from electronasounds.com from the reflective sample pack. That one is just a collection of like one shot sounds. Everything you need to write music from drums to, you know, pads and chords and basses and effects, all that stuff. Uh, so the drums came from the reflective sample pack today. Um, the impact crash is just sort of like a default crash sound that I, you know, typically like to use in my productions, but all of the melodics today, we're using the inbuilt synthesizers in the Akai Force. Uh, there's like four or five of uh, built-in synthesizers, uh, and today we're actually just using one of those. It's called the Hype Synth. All of the melodics are coming from that today. The bass, the pad, the lead, the little flute synthesizer, and the arpeggio. We just scrolled through the existing presets. We didn't really focus a lot on like sound design specifically. We just really focused today a lot on the uh, on the producing and the mixing inside of the box, like using the lot of the EQs and the, you know, built-in effects that we can use. Um, but we didn't sample anything into the box today, and we're not using uh, any external gear today at all. Um, something like this, you know, I would just keep you know, fleshing out the arrangement of something like this, really, really work on the, you know, the finesse between those transitions and bringing in the new sounds and trying to maybe create new patterns from the old sounds to keep the interest flowing as we keep, you know, building the arrangement. Another thing that's cool about the force that we can do is that, you know, once we've built something like this, if we want to, we can, at just the click of a button, export this entire session to an Ableton Live session and then load what we've created here exactly as it is right up. It's not going to, uh, you know, load the hype synthesizer inside of Ableton, rather, but it's going to, you know, just... Um, render out the audio from those plugins so that, you know, you could then further extend the arrangement or use, you know, tools inside of a DAW like Ableton Live or something to continue a project like this. It just depends on, you know, what your in intention is and what your, you know, desired workflow is at the end of the day. But I just think that's a neat thing that we can start, you know, a project in a hands-on way like this. We could even sample, you know, outside gear into this and then just like that we could load that whole project, we could export it rather, and load that whole project into Ableton if that, you know, is a workflow that we want to, you know, look into. Um, so I think we are going to get ready to go ahead and wrap it up today. It's been a pretty long one, almost three and a half hours, 322 so far. So if there's any questions at all in the chat, you know, I'll be happy to hang around and answer any questions. Um, you know, we're going to play through the arrangement one more time. Um, and we'll definitely be back uh, next Sunday for another live stream. I'm not exactly sure what we're going to do. Um, maybe more with the Akai Force. I'm not exactly sure. I've been having quite a bit of fun, like, learning more of the ins and outs of this box. So maybe more with the Akai Force this week. Uh, I'm not 100% sure on that. Um, all right, but let's. De uh, what is the the blue? Uh, that's a great question. Um, this is actually a brand new, um, super super cheap acquisition from Amazon. When I do these streams, um, I've often been plugging things down into this mixer that I have. Um, I'm gonna see if I can't tilt this camera forward. I have a, a large mixer underneath my desk down here, okay? And I, I, I'm i using that, and that's plugged into my monitor speakers and stuff, and I'm, I'm using that mixer all the time. But for the live
live streams, it felt a little weird to go, here's all this gear, but it's being plugged in all underneath the desk and you can't see any of that. So I felt a little odd, like that wasn't really the most helpful way to show, you know, this type of a hardware workflow. And I wanted to get a mixer that I could, you know, recommend that, you know, to people to use, but not a super expensive mixer, not like a big, you know, you should buy a 22 channel multi-track expensive mixer. Like I don't actually really vibe with this mixer all that well to begin with. Um, and so I started looking at, you know, what my options might be for like super, super easy to use, no frills. I don't need built-in effects or anything fancy. I don't need a mixer to record to like USB audio. I don't need it to record multi-track to USB audio. I don't need it to accept USB audio in. I just needed a mixer that I could put, you know, gear around the table with and we could plug it directly into the mixer and affect the volumes and have a little bit of control over EQ in real time. These, uh, all these channels, there's a total of 14 channels, okay? We have uh, 10 channels that are mono and then we have two stereo channels. So if you want to plug stereo stuff into like the mono channels, you just plug them in to one and two and pan those hard left and right, boom, you've got a stereo input. So basically, you could plug five pairs of stereo inputs, and then we've got an effects send. So you could route that out to a pedal, you could route that back into one of these stereo channels, and you could route anything in here to uh, that effects pedal as well. So all I really needed was something simple like that. It's got a three-band EQ, low, mid, and high. Um, it was $99 on, e on Amazon, excuse me. The brand is Ar Arvomic, Arvomic, Arvomic. I'm not sure. Um, what that brand is or how to say it per se. I've never heard of this mixer before. And I assumed that with such a you know cheap price, $99, I assumed that it was probably going to be so lousy and like with a really big noise floor and just you know not usable. And then I might have a video you know to show to you guys that says, hey, don't buy cheap shitty mixers off Amazon, but that's really not been the case. It's really lived up to every expectation that I've had, and I fully, you know, at this point, I would say this is a perfect first mixer or beginning mixer for anyone who might need a mixer. If you just need a way to route your audio into like a set of, you know, monitor speakers, or if you want to be able to, you know, have one place to plug in all your audio, which you can plug headphones into, or if you just need an expansion for your, you know, large mixer and you need more inputs. This is a fantastic option, super cheap, super easy to use, and really perfect for my needs so far. It's got mic inputs, it's got phantom power. If you need the power, like, you know, a whole bunch of, like, phantom powered microphones and record drum kits. It's not, you know, the best mixer in the world per se, but for a hundred dollars, I mean, I would, if, if I had paid double for this, I still would have been immensely happy with what it brings to the table and the quality. Um, the knobs on it are not necessarily, you know, the best knobs. These are kind of like hundred dollar knobs, you know, they're a little bit wobbly. But the faders on here are not $100 faders. They're like nice. They're like, like, they feel really good is the thing. So our Vomic, I have a link to this exact mixer um, in last week's live stream uh, in the description under that video. If you want to check out, make sure you get the exact one. There's a link under last week's live stream. Um, yeah, our Vomic, I, or our Vomic, uh, it, you know, it, supposedly will receive Bluetooth audio as well. I don't really say that out loud. I just did, but I haven't tested that is the thing because I don't really need it for that. But I know a lot of you with iPhones and iPads might find that really useful. If you could send, you know, Bluetooth audio wirelessly to the mixer. The thing is, is that if you haven't played around with um, Bluetooth audio, it's got latency. So you can't like sync everything up and then wirelessly send audio, it, it, it's just not quite, so I don't really promote that aspect of it, but it does, it does do that on some level. Um, definitely, all right.
Yeah, you're very welcome. I love I love hanging out with you guys and you know doing this stuff in real time. I figure if if you guys can take away you know anything from these streams, sometimes along you know the road of your musical journey, you know things get a little dark, things get a little stagnant, things get a little slow, and sometimes it might take you know just that one new idea. Um, I feel that I, I stagnated a lot as a music producer, and how I really got out of that stagnation and like doing the same thing just over and over again was uh, I bought some classes from uh, Sonic Academy. I bought some full classes from BassGorilla.com as well. And I literally sat down for three to four hours. And these classes are people producing tracks in real time. The exact same thing that we're doing here, you know, typically in a DAW environment, you know, but they're doing it every step of the way so that you know when you go along with the class like that you're really seeing how somebody's going to deal with you know all of these elements and maybe halfway through the track they're going to you know reshift their thinking on the drums or the what and so seeing somebody else work like that actually get in and use the tools in real time I think is was for me personally the most beneficial thing to like my learning curve uh, as well and so I just want to you know continue doing these kind of things in real time so that if you guys can maybe even take away one or two things a week that you add to your own workflow and help yourself on your musical journey then I think we're definitely achieving what I set out to achieve here all right all right, so yeah, three and a half hour stream, a long one, definitely, oh, a really big, uh, you know, thumbs up to Simon, can't say it enough, that workflow uh, that I've learned with the sampler just now is just huge for me, huge for me, I don't know why I didn't quite realize that was how it worked already, um, but I just didn't, so definitely big ups to Simon one more time, all right. We're going to go ahead and call it for today. I appreciate you guys hanging out. I know this ended up being a long one. Uh, I think we got a really neat little, you know, start of a track here. And I also think that this is kind of like a pretty good example of like, you know, real time song writing. You know, I'm not going to sit down in an, in an hour, come out with a finished track. It's typically going to be, you know, anywhere from like 16 to 20 hours typically on a finished type track where we're focusing the way that we've been doing here. So about three and a half hours, you know, if we're going to add, you know, a, another 12 to 15 hours on top of this that we've already put in to create a finished track from something like this to where it's just absolutely finished and everything is the way that I want it to be. That's another, you know, 12 to 15 hours of work that I would need to put in typically to get something, you know, really where I'm happy with it. Just so you guys can, you know, really see the workflow and the time that I'm putting into these projects. I think uh, you, so many people today are just trying to do everything so fast. You know, YouTubers are like doing things in five, ten minutes and making you feel that, you know, if you're not doing things that quickly, that maybe, you know, you're not you know, up to the standard. But I also want to, you know, stress that we didn't just throw a whole bunch of sounds together today trying to build something as fast as possible, but we spent the time to build a stronger foundation that would, you know, stand up to continuing to build on that foundation and add more pieces and more elements. And then if I continued, you know, to put in the rest of those hours and continue sculpting this, we could definitely get this in absolutely into a finished track that I would be proud of. Absolutely. All right. Good deal. All right. So we're going to go ahead and call it. And until next week, thanks for watching. Take care of each other, you guys. All right. Thanks again. <laughs>